Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Uh, anyways, hey everyone, welcome to Four Player Podcast, episode seven hundred and eighty-seven. Uh, it's March nineteenth, twenty twenty-four. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, joined uh, as always by Brad Simons. What's up? Wee wee wee. Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Christopher Guthridge. Hello. And Christopher Davis. Good evening. And uh, welcome back to Four Player Podcast. We didn't do a show last week. Uh, but we had a good time, uh, those of us who showed up, to uh, we had a good time playing Helldivers 2 together. And uh, let me tell you, that was a trip. I don't know, I enjoyed my, enti- my time with that game immensely. And Nolan, that last moment of our last game together last week was kind of incredible. There was yeah. <laughs> Nolan randomly gets booted from the game at some point and has in gets pretty, pretty early into the, the run. Yeah. So like the entire run, he's trying to reconnect to our squad and it just won't let him. And it's not an Internet issue. It's just, it seems like a server issue. It just won't let him back in. And then we go to uh, what do you call it? Extract. When you extract from the mission. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden it lets him reconnect. And the <laughs> counter has like 30 seconds left on it. So it drops him onto the map. And we're all screaming, panicking, like, get on the, get on the, on the, the plane, get on the plane or whatever. And it drops him. He lands like 20 feet from the back of the plane, gets off, gets out of the thing and just runs into the shit and gets carried away. Successful mission. Successful mission. Also, somehow in the, in like the 20 feet he ran from the drop pod to the plane, he fired a bullet and it hit either me or Chris Davis or something. It would hit me. Uh, and so when we got the stats play at the end of the game, he had a hundred percent accuracy, <laughs> uh, which I thought was pretty phenomenal. So it just, it was, you know, and it, even though not the, like the, the typical kind of, uh, emergent gameplay experience, you normally hear about people describing Helldivers 2, certainly one for the, it's, it's going to be a memorable one for memorable. us. That was, yeah, that was, that was pretty great. It was like, a, it was like 30 minutes of frustration and then I could hear Nolan's mood immediately change when he realized the, the miracle that was occurring uh, on the stream. So very cool moment. Anyways, I just wanted to tell that story live on, on, on the show. It's, Helldivers is just, it just keeps getting better, man. That they, game they, is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, they're, they're really starting to tease a new enemy for the bugs. They're teasing the return of a faction from the first game. Uh, dude, this game is so good. So fucking good. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. And I still I'm still kind of like hopeful that I can get back in and, and play a few uh, matches here and there. My problem is I'm like so I'm like so laser focused trying to finish Final Fantasy seven Rebirth and or Persona three prior to Dragon's Dogma two, which just mm-hmm. probably ain't going to happen at this point that I haven't even I haven't dived back into it, if you know what I mean. Um, Unless you have guy. a time machine, it ain't happening. Yeah, I know, I know. It's uh, it's a cruel world. It's a cruel world. But hey, what are you gonna do? Anyways, um, I don't know what the plan is tonight, guys. We're gonna talk about video games and such. I know we're we, we're gonna talk about more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, Nolan is 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 balls deep in Bellatro, and I'm sure Brad's uh, been playing a fair amount of that as well. And yes. uh, and Unicorn Overlord, which um, somebody on our Twitter account claimed they didn't realize that was a real game and not some kind of weird, like, free-to-play mobile thing because of the title, yeah, <laughs> which I thought know, was pretty funny. I, 
I don't have anything against unicorns, but that is a weird title for what it is. It is kind of. Is, I mean, is does the unicorn thing have any specific significance to like the I game? No fucking I game. hope so. I'm over 25 hours in now, and I have no fucking. <laughs> You've never hours. seen a unicorn. <laughs> well, Nobody actually, has even spoken no, you have to the word add unicorn. My demo time to this. You so don't play as a unicorn. Hours, I think. You don't like ride a unicorn into battle. You're not fighting like an empire of unicorns. No, I that think maybe cool, the though. unicorn is a reference to like the rarity. Maybe is there even like an overlord? Mm-hmm. You know what? I actually have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, a bad title. I mean, let's be real. Maybe, Brad is the, maybe. She, I mean, I think it maybe just like the cr- the cr- the the crest of the of the arms. The the their sigil. The, uh, Sterling Which Sky and chat has a unicorn. Okay, Sterling Sky in chat says the unicorn is the kingdom, and you have a ring of the unicorn, uh, or something like that. Just saying the, the words unicorn, unicorn. But like that. It's got to have some other meaning for it to be the fucking name of the game. Like what? Hmm. Overlord. I don't want to hear from this guy <laughs> because he's the only other fucking person on the planet playing this game, apparently, besides me. And I'm tired of him being like, hey, man, this game's awesome. I'm like, yeah, this game's awesome. Who's all playing it? And he's like me. I just said it's awesome. And I'm like, I know you're like <laughs> the only other person playing it. I need other people to tell me it's awesome, too. So hey, man, uh, I'm going to go talk to some other people. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i know i know i'm just saying like you know i want more people to experience this and you know damn it it's cool well I you know, know maybe maybe you'll successfully convince somebody when you talk about the part on the podcast yeah, maybe the night i i bought um, the game i want to play it but i'm not playing it right no. now i can't i can't Chris, do it remember Why you lose Chris... a point every time you say you bought a game is it without having played a vanilla okay. game it yeah. is a vanilla yeah. game, yes. Uh, okay. Which is like the main reason I want to play, even though to this day. To oh this yeah, day, I forgot you're a big Vanillaware fan. No, no, no. Aren't you, to this day, I have only played one Vanillaware game, um, so I don't know really know why. The big titties. <laughs> no, I played Muramasa the Demon Blade. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of big titties in that as well. You didn't even mm-hmm. play the big booby sorcerer. Uh, one? No, 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 no. I kind of wanted to, maybe, admittedly, because of the big titties, but. Uh, I haven't. They all have big titties. What are you uh, talking about? They all have big, big titties. titties. What big titties are you talking about in Muramasa the Demon Blade? I, can't I mean, think there's of other any characters big... besides the one you play as. Mm. But I, some of I, them have big titties. I don't. Mm. I don't know if that's accurate. Can some... <laughs> look it up, dude. Somebody mm. sent. Somebody send me pictures of big titties in Muramasa, and not like. Uh, every oh God, no! Has he wants you don't Muramasa hentai. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a real screenshot Rule of the video 34. game. Oh, it God. has to be a real screenshot of the video game. That's my that's the rule. Nick, what um, have you done? Nick, what have you done? I'm just saying. I'm just I mean you, you It's okay to you, forget. It's okay that you forget. It only counts if it's a real screenshot from the video game. Anyways. Look, um, just look up the Amazon from was it Dragon's Jesus. Crown? And there you go. No, dude, I the know Kingdom? exactly who you're talking about. Um, I'm saying I mean, they that's... all have big titties, even Unicorn Overlord. Mm. Okay, well, you know, literally the staple of this dude's art, art style, oh, big titties. I thought it was just like, yeah, look at that. I'm looking at a big titted his, fox lady. She's, his oeuvre revolves oh, around. Oh, is Prince is posting links? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, no. oh, yep, I stand corrected. Yeah, Phone Giku, the uh, the wise fox, has been has corrected. big titties. Yeah, I stand corrected. Right. I stand corrected. Um, anyways, y'all want to talk fancy critic for a few minutes? It's been a couple weeks since we had a chance to. Oh my god, there's a figurine of or a statue. Okay, focus, Brad. Focus. You can look at I'm, big titties I'm later. I'm listening. What's it up? Has, it has real action grip, Brad. If you catch my drift. They got a statue of the fox lady. <gasps> okay. <laughs> what is this? Some furry shit. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, it, no. it's literally just. I mean, no, no, God, no. Brad, <laughs> no. would have to be, things happen. There would have to be fur all over the body, and it would have to be poorly drawn art. I'm sorry. That that's a re, we're recalling <laughs> like a past conversation. 
just... yeah that was another thing that the conversation that kind of started off the podcast before yeah, we started recording let's but on. let's just move on brad you don't want to talk about feet no uh, blue feet no well let me just tell no, you if you want to talk no. about things like blue feet or big titty anime characters uh Maybe consider joining our Discord at discord.gg slash four player. Oh, okay. Um, just saying. Just saying. You can find the link uh, in chat. You can find the link on fourplayernetwork.com. Uh, yeah, I really wasn't That's... certain where you were going with that, Nick. I really wasn't either until I got there. Um, but that's just yeah. that's just the way I have to roll sometimes. Okay. Fantasy Critic. It's Like I said, it's been two weeks since we recorded. Uh has anything happened? I think so. I feel like some things have happened. There have been some right. uh, pick up a game. game. Pick oh, ups. Chris Davis picked up. He's just so hungry for games. He picked up another one. God, you have one slot left, don't you? Yeah. You motherfucker. Which means I can spend. He picked up on a it. Capcom uh, Kunitsugami. Yeah. Is he the only one who tried for that one? Yes. Probably. Pretty I sure. believe so. Yeah. Wait, I'll, what? I'll which it game looks, it looks cool. Like the last showing of it looks re- looked really cool. Oh, is this that Onimusha looking game? Yes. It ain't Onimusha looking, but I mean, yeah, not I, anymore. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> the first time that they showed it, we thought this was like an Onimusha game, but yeah. now that they've shown it's like the what it is, about this game that I guess no one's gonna buy. Well, but I'm just trying to confirm this is the game I'm thinking it's of. Like, the correct it's game. like a it's like a cool like tower defense game is what. It looks yeah, like. I didn't see that coming at all. Well, you know, one of the reasons I didn't buy it, I mean, bid on it, is because I think it's cool looking and i think it might score okay but i'm not like i don't think this is like some big triple a thing or anything like the director is the director of that like side scrolling underwater metroidvania that capcom put out like half a decade ago hydrophobia okay Wait, no. listen to what i said no that's oh, not wait, hydrophobia. Right. that's not hydrophobia side scrolling underwater metroidvania put out by capcom like I'm literally be an indie indie looking game from like half a half a decade ago it's called like it starts with the s h maybe Hydrophobia. pulling it out of my ass i know chai tai liked it uh yeah i don't know what to tell you but i'm saying in, in and when i kind of put know. it into that perspective i i feel like kunitsugami is actually just like a really cool looking indie game like it's like a tower right. defense game you know i don't think you're going to like a world and there's like a crazy story i think I think you're playing like a really cool, fancy looking tower defense game, which makes sense that it was the director of like a fucking Capcom developed indie game, which isn't cool. Like I want to see it. I'm down. I mean, I just don't know if I'm willing to take the risk on it. I don't know. Points. You know what I mean? But Hmm. hey, Capcom, we're in like the golden era of Capcom, I feel like. So, well, I mean, maybe that, I mean, maybe that's arguable, but I feel like they're definitely, they're they're they have they're going strong right now so i don't don't know if it's you know i don't think i would usually bet against capcom at the moment but they you know you know do you want to say the name of this game yet nope i got it shin sakai into the depths okay yeah i still have i yeah i still have no idea what game that is uh you you might remember but you probably didn't realize it was capcom i mean if you saw it i'm sorry if you saw like footage of it or i can't even spell it i'm Somebody post the link in chat. I'll click it. And, um, also, uh, other than that, like nothing else, mu- nothing much else has happened. Um, that affects our league specifically. Yeah. Our league specifically. Although I don't know. I don't think we mentioned it the last time we talked about fantasy critic, but Brad picked up uh, satisfactory for a bit of $19. He did. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought about that. Which you know, I, guess, it, I guess Chris Davis wanted to call out how much I spent on it because no, I was just calling out that, that that was the last pickup. But it, it was after I lost Bellatro and I was like, you know what, motherfucker, I'm definitely going to get these games. And plus, I mean, like probably many of us, I'm pretty committed to using my super drop, super drop because I feel yeah. like it'd be dumb not to. I was thinking Honestly. about it. Well, you're going to need it because that game fucking sucks. <laughs> just to make sure I understand, um, and I'm sorry if this is repeating true. something I've already asked, but just so I cl- make it perfectly clear that I understand this correctly. By dr- super dropping a counter pick, it means the most I can lose is seven points on yes. that particular no, game. on okay. a counter pick. Oh, on, the counter- on that slot, right? 
it's it's like you have you spent money to if i feel like i'm going to lose more than seven points on a counter pick it's best using the super drop would make sense is what you're saying well i mean it doesn't even have to be used on a counter pick but yeah no, no, i mean I the I'm, idea I'm is specifically asking it in reference to using it on a counter pick if i think i'm going to lose more than seven points using a super drop would make sense yeah, for a counter pick yeah. okay for sure just wanted but, but like, just it, it, sure. I, I feel like it would have to be like you know not just a little more than seven points right i mean i'm not um, gonna if, if i think i'm gonna get an eight i'm not gonna use it <laughs> so i can say yeah, because i mean point. if a game you have on your list comes out and it's like you know rise of the ronin or something comes out and it's a 72 you know that he gained two points on that he, which is better than losing seven points. But at the same time, that frees up a space that he could draft something that's an 85, you know, like, like, like True. It, it, it's using it on something that ha having the knowledge of, I mean, he, I mean, the problem it, is you have game to make the decision. can already be released. I mean, right, that's right. the power you, of a super drop. The problem is you have to make the decision before J July yes, 1st. And, and in my case, both of my counter picks, if I, unless I'm forgetting one, I think, I think both my counter picks are coming out later in the year. So I, I had to like kind of make a, I have to make a judgment Dude, call. All of my games come out later in the year, if at all. Like my list this year is very like, if it pays off, I'm not going to know for a very long time. <laughs> and I've already got fucked on 3D Mario because of this whole Switch 2 delay. So that's frustrating. Yeah. So we'll see. So tomorrow is actually a big day just in general. Uh, I guess it'd probably be a big day for any league, Fantasy it's Critic late. League, because reviews for three oh, games yeah. big big games mm -hmm. are ha are dropping tomorrow dragon's mm -hmm. dogma 2 so we're gonna find out just how just how uh much <laughs> no one's gonna be winning yeah it'll <laughs> with be that game one. here it's that'll so, be a dub be <laughs> that'll be a dub for no one uh rise of the ronin which there's been a lot of talk about that yeah. in terms that's, of which direction ronin that's thursday. gonna go is that thursday that's thursday okay so i might have to wait an extra day on that one but whatever in the next two days next 48 hours it'll be a, uh, a big kind of a big big two two days for for fantasy critic um and then of course princess peach showtime i think is tomorrow as Which, well i'll say real quick uh dragon's dogma two based on preview coverage but also like trust in you know you know, it's Uno, Knowledge of Dragon Song. I think that's an easy 85 plus in my opinion, which is a big glow up after that first game, but I still believe. Um, I think Ronin is going to be around. And I think it's like, that's a 75 minus based on previews, which were some quite negative. And I, I feel like when a preview cycle is negative, that's a usually a bad sign for an upcoming game. Um, and Princess Peach, I would say... I did not say like Brad, but it, it is a game for children and I get it. But at the same time, Brad like hates children games for children. You know, I think really 82. what it is 82. Uh, I think, I think if it gets an 82, you should be very pleased because that 82 game was buddy. Um, you know, they could just play fucking Kirby like this. This shit was whack. I don't know. The The truth is I'm, I'm a little bitter about oh, Princess Peach because I'm sure it's going to sell girls? really well. And, and it's just a puppeteer knockoff. They fucking totally cribbed off. of Nobody puppeteer. played puppeteer. Exactly. <laughs> no one's going to no awesome. one's going to see Wait. it that way. Wait puppeteer a second. Is awesome. And you know what? It has fucking voice acting in it. Great. You're voice a acting. bitter old Princess man Peach who's played too many a, games. A, Super Princess Peach is an ugly, cheap. <laughs> Puppeteer knockoff with no voice acting. I mean, come on, Nintendo. Peach, the character, deserves better than this shit. I think it's going to be more like a 75 minus as well. I mean, yeah, I don't okay. know. It'll probably be fine. It'll probably be like an 80. Because people are like, oh, there's so much charm. What's puppeteer? Like, fuck those critics. Brad is, Brad is, is really letting his puppeteer love uh, it was just, poison it was just the well. The demo was lame. Yeah. I mean, the demo was lame. That's all. I mean, I do think it's whack that a game of that of that genre which is clearly made for a younger audience not saying it's bad but i feel like not having voice acting when it's when it's skewing towards younger audiences is oh, kind of insane this shit dude kind of insane no, I, I keep um, telling henry like man you better fucking pay attention better in school man because <laughs> i ain't voice acting you're gonna, this shit much or you're longer. gonna you need you're to gonna read. be left behind and by Princess Peach. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm asking him. I'm like, don't you want to know what's happening? Don't you want to be able to read and know the bullshit that's on screen? And he's like, eh. Please you know, tell me. You, 
Oh. Please tell me you frame the question exactly like that too. Yeah. I mean, what are they fucking learning in kindergarten anymore? Like, right? Well, isn't that what you learn in kindergarten? How to read? What the fuck? I feel like in a fucking. I think that's like first grade. Texas education. I think in <laughs> kindergarten they do like nap time and colors and shapes. Oh man, I miss kindergarten. No, they don't do nap time. That's what, what? Is nap time in kindergarten? Yeah, yeah they did. Daycare, daycare shit, dude. That's uh, daycare. Dude, no, we did oh, dude, nap dude. time in kindergarten. Yeah. Definitely did nap time in kindergarten. I don't know what yeah. fancy yeah. private schools y'all went to, but there ain't no nap time. Fancy Florida public schools, baby. Like Texas public. There's Texas no public way that school. Texas there's public there's schools are worse. You go to you go to recess and then lunch. You don't take a nap. No, no, yeah, we just we went because to recess you went... and lunch and took a nap. Just because I, I, I you were in kindergarten in 1956, Brad, doesn't mean yeah. that the kid, children today... Did they, did they still hit you when you, you know, were in kindergarten? You could have actually just said the year I was actually in kindergarten, and people would have been like, wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but you added <laughs> a little It was 1987, it. wasn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they still had a paddle with, like, holes in it, right? Called the <laughs> assistant principal. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure my kid's not napping at school. I need, I need, like, I I don't think you understand how old a kindergartner is because, like, what, like, you know, I could tell a five year old -old to take a nap. Five and six. I'm telling you, no way. Look, Nolan, I'm not, I'm not arguing that, I'm not arguing that your son is taking naps at school every day. I'm just saying, when I was in kindergarten, like when I was in the classroom at the elementary Ask school, mom, right next door right to now. the to the first grade classroom, we took naps after recess. 30 minute nap time after mom. recess. I am, I am, she I am, wouldn't a, know. Uh, I am, Adam Sandler, uh, Uncut Gems GIF, I disagree. Okay. okay, no one's over here smiling and shaking his head. I need no one to be the tiebreaker here. Because I 100% agree with Crispy. I remember the room I took naps in, and it was yep. absolutely. I remember in the, the mats that building. we would pull out. Maybe it was and, pre-K. Yeah. yeah. Maybe no. Pre-K. No. I didn't I, go to pre-K at the elementary school. I hundred. Yes, correct. I did not go to La pre-K. At, I don't know, some fucking daycare. I'm telling. I you, was in kindergarten no at the school that you lived right next to when you were in South Austin. <laughs> what the fuck Wait, does that have to do? Who with are anything? you Did you take a nap or not? I did. I remember taking naps. God yeah, damn it. Nolan's silence is speaking volumes. I need Nolan to speak up now. Nolan, did you nap There's in no kindergarten? Way, dude. There's no way. I know you remember. I did not nap in kindergarten. No. Mm. Oh, I napped in the did you, pre-K no, did. like Look. before like kindergarten Look. Like, kind of daycare thing with some light <laughs> studying that we did. Uh, but my kindergarten, first off, I will say that my kindergarten, if I recall, was only a half day. It was not a full day. Oh, well, yeah. What um, kind of bullshit is that? Yeah. And what then the fuck? It, or was that I, I, it's it, you know, it was a, a few years ago when I was also a dumb kid. Uh, but like, I, I don't know if that was if I did pre-K half at the school and the other half at the daycare um, or I completely full daycare pre-K and then I, I don't remember, but I, I don't actually remember taking naps at my actual school. The thing is, you know, pre-K well, is at the school that you go to kindergarten, right? So uh, you might be remembering pre-K. Not always. Not, not every. It definitely was not yeah, for me. Yeah, that's not, that's not always true. First of all, second of all, I did go to pre-K at a daycare like at a pre-k daycare that was not at the school mm-hmm. yep so we didn't do we didn't do pre-k like they didn't have like whatever a pre-k is now like they had a daycare and then they had i just don't understand why i have to trust grade. y'all's dusty ass memories when i actually have a kid in kindergarten because uh, because it's because it's been 30 years and things are different and that's completely reasonable yeah Damn, he got you there. I think I think that I think the issue is that you're realizing you got fucking scammed, dude. You got scammed out of a whole year of naps. You're like, hey man, I feel for you, but like seriously, like you got fucking scammed. All right, I don't even remember how we got on this conversation. Let's let's bring it back into video games. Uh, somehow, seriously, how the fuck did we even talk talking about? I don't even know. Um, Princess Peach is a baby game. Millennial yeah kindergarten. there we go princess peach is a baby game okay all right yeah it's a baby game and it's like you know just a knockoff of puppeteer puppeteer was brilliant 
motherfucking oh, Sony closing down Japan studio. Just that that's dis that's just disgusting. <laughs> fucking garbage ass industry. It's it's a game Next that time. deserves a remaster. Easily. It is it is a it is it deserves a- it, it no, it doesn't it just it just it's a studio that deserves to be making cool shit like that, and it doesn't exist anymore. That's what it deserves. All right. Okay. Calm down. Everybody take a deep breath. Everybody take a nap. And uh, let's... I remember my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Kane. There's no way she was making it through the day without a nap time. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. There's no way... <laughs> That she was going to deal with those kids all day unless there was a nap time after recess after we got our blood up. Snack time? Snack time? I don't understand why, like, your brain can't comprehend that, like, maybe I actually remember and am right. Like You were in Florida. To be fair, you were in Florida. I, Dude, I was in Austin, Texas. (laughs) And I had the same experience. Yes. Oh my god. Also, by the way, uh, I am kind of... I, I didn't really intend on playing... Uh, Princess Peach, and I, I kind of looked up at someone playing the demo. Um, it is very much puppeteer, uh, and it very much seems like it's super easy. <laughs> Damn, which y- easy, you know, but, and, but and it doesn't make sense to me because you know they're like, oh yeah, it's it's Mario, it's a baby game, but like old school Mario was not easy. Nope. Like you know the the whole thing, you know, I, I don't know, like I. I don't want to be an old man. I think we're supposed to be old like, men yelling at clouds. It's one of yeah. those things where it's like, I, 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 maybe people, maybe kids are, are just different now. And if, if it's too difficult, they just give up and and go look at TikTok well, dances, I guess. That and, oh, I mean, sure, that's the cynical view. But, <laughs> but am I wrong? You know, it is, it is. We've talked about it before, too, where it's like... Th- Mario games back then were coming from a tradition where, like, games were still in that, like, design mindset of, like, arcades, right? Where, like, you had lives and continues and shit like that, right? And you needed coins! Yeah, and not only that, Nintendo used to, like, sell Nintendo Power magazines with tips and tricks and, like, used to have a hint line that you could call, like, they just, like... Like, it was an artificial inflation to support other parts of their business that, like, don't exist anymore. So, what's the point? Damn. Shit just got real. <laughs> That's sad. But, like, so I'm, 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 I'm watching this, this guy play it, and apparently, like, all, like, it... Does it, like, play itself almost? No. Like, he's fighting a boss, and all he's doing is pressing the jump button, and she's attacking and jumping and dodging? There's a lot of like auto pairing and stuff. I mean, when well, like literally, you know, like I'm watching the demo and this this guy happens to have his camera on and he literally is showing him just pressing the button and like Peach is like attacking and dodging and like hitting the boss. Like that leads me to believe this thing. is going to be a common a common point throughout. There's lots, lots of, of reviews. easy Nintendo games, right? Just get a fucking Kirby game, like that fucking 3D True. Kirby game that came out. Uh, yeah. Last year or whatever, the year where before. he sucks off cars. That, shit, that one, that yeah, that shit is wi- easy as hell. But that shit was wild. Like that, there's so much going on in that game for a child. This shit is just kind of like, you know, it's just whack puppeteer. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But it's gonna get that Nintendo bump. So I'm sure fantasy critic wise will be fine. I'm just saying, like for me personally, I played that demo and I was like, Henry, I, he played it too, and I was like, come on, dude, you could do better. This, this shit. and Henry was like, Dad, this is a baby game. But that's the thing, you know, like uh, Mario Odyssey is a great game for a kid to fuck around with. They're not going to get all the moons, but like they're big open stages. They can go around. They get moons for doing all kinds of shit. And like putting Princess Peach up against this, like it's embarrassing. You know, they should Princess Peach deserves better. You know, this yeah. this is from the studio that made those should have been know, a Daisy game. Middling, 3D Yoshi games in recent years or whatever. Like so, we, so what you're saying is we maybe shouldn't be too surprised by this. Okay. For for a yeah. show where we were not going to talk about Princess Peach, we sure have talked a lot about Princess Peach. So, with that, uh why don't we why don't we revisit Bellatro first? Okay. Cuz I know yeah, Nolan's uh, been going hard on Bellatro, deep and hard. Correct. Ditto. 
Yeah. And and Brad. But we haven't really heard from Nolan since he actually started playing it. What's up, Nolan? Um man, I have a love hate relationship with Bellatro. <laughs> um I love when it's going well and I hate when it's not. It, it uh, feels bad. Losing a run feels awful. Yeah, it's it truly is like a, you know, a luck of the draw or the you know, the, the cards, you know, it, it, it is so infuriating when you get like, you know, you t- do your first blind and then you get to the second one and or like you, after you finish your first blind, the shop has like a negative joker for one more dollar than you have. And yeah. you, you why, why man? I can't I can't make money yet. Like I literally did the I, I played my first blind with a single hand optimal money and i just don't why are you gonna give me this shit and then literally the rest of the run not a single negative joker in the shop like what the uh, fuck are, like are i know it's rng but it can be very frustrating joker? yeah What's are that? you skipping blinds mm. to get that negative joker because sometimes no, you, you... I'm, I'm telling you that i it's happened on the first shop man as someone who doesn't know like how to play without, poker without this sounds a blind like skip like you, you didn't yes. force it you didn't force yes. it yeah, I mean it's just a small RNG chance. It's like, I know, yeah. it, but it's frustrating. But like I said, like I said, it's frustrating when like there's literally nothing I can do. I can't sell my soul. Uh, and maybe if I had gotten lucky and there was a, 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 a like a, a debit card or whatever, the credit card in the shop at the same time. Yeah, but it never works out that way. You know what really um, sucks? Don't get me wrong. Is, I, I know, like getting what's up? Getting into a shop, and you know, you're like, hmm. I kind of want to buy that choker, I guess, maybe. But let's crack open this spectral pack first to see kind of what I get. And maybe it'll help me decide what joker I want. And you get the Ankh, the one that, like, destroys all other jokers, but makes one of them polychrome. And you're like, if mm-hmm. I just bought that fucking joker first, yep. I'd have a polychrome joker with no downside. Real quick, because I, this is just one of those games where I know we've talked about it before. But if someone didn't listen to that podcast, this does not, like... So- all right. For so, a real, real, real quick, real quick rundown. Real quick, it's worth, fine. It's fine. Worth real, 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 I mean, for, so yeah. So hold on, hold on, Brad. First off, the game just sold a million copies. So there's probably what? a few people out there that uh, are familiar with it. I'm um, surprised. But the the very simplistic. I've put way ten of, hours of, into this game. Oh fuck! Yeah, okay. was, <laughs> the, the very Jesus. simplistic version of high level of this game is yes, it is quote poker in the sense that you are making poker hands to score points or chips. Uh, to beat levels. That's essentially it. You have a, a poker hand, you have a blind. Um, in this case, you know, the, the first blind is you need to make 300 chips. Um, and so you make combination of poker hands and you get points. Um, and there you go. Uh, obviously, the further you go, those points or the chips, the score you need to, to pass the level goes up and up and up quite high. Um, and so you need to supplement uh, your poker hands with joker cards uh, which manipulate the scoring. Um, so, for example, you might get a Joker card that every time you play a spade, the multiplier is increased by four. Um, if you look at um, uh, when you're playing the game, there's a run info button. And if you click on it, it will show you every possible hand combination for the most part. There's a few it doesn't show in there. Um, and it will show you what you would score if you played it. And so, for example, it might be, uh, you know, a, a, a flush on the very first time you play it is 30 chips times a four multiplier. So that's 120 points, right? Makes well, sense. Well, you might get something that it m- modifies that multiplier. So instead of being 30 chips times four, it might be 30 chips times 15 chips that or times 15. That's a whole lot more. Um, and so these jokers just there's there's 120 of them i think some somewhere around there all do different um, things 120 different ways you can manipulate your, like the cards the way they they yeah. play um and so some of them are like oh they just give you a base increase in the number of chips you score uh some of them um you know, you know uh oh if you discard this type of card you'll get some extra money a huge variety or the of vagabond like, do you ever get the vagabond, va- 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 where vagabond like every good. hand you play where you ha- currently have less than like three, three bucks three dollars then you generate a tarot card which are really powerful mm-hmm. so so yeah. like it's a really powerful joker but you basically have to be broke your whole run but like you're, you're you can you're never sort of you can never accumulate a large amount of money cards. which which you know but, generating, but if having you, a good if economy you pair, is really powerful 
if you pair v- Vagabond with like like a rocket or whatever that one is called, where you are accruing a whole lot of money each hand, then they can play well with each other. So you can mm. always be generating those tarot cards and neck tarot cards or like Brad said, they're like the, uh, you know, they, they have one that like, oh, when you get a tarot card, you can maybe make a, any random um uh, card like a wild or make it a lucky card and a lucky card um, has a chance of either increasing the mult by a whole lot or just giving you straight up cash um, lots of different ways there's celestial cards so there's one for each like planet um, that increases like i said that that flush as an example 30 chips times four multiplier it increases it to the next level which is i don't know like i can't i can't remember like more, 60 chips times chips like five more. like every time you level it up it goes up and there are certain cards that i am a fan of the burnt card is a great one um mm. every time instead of playing a hand if you discard like a good hand say you would discard a flush well then your flush level goes up by one mm. and so there you know there's this there's this play of like you only have as as an example if you're looking at the 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 footage we're watching right now you have four hands to make as many points as you can uh you mm. have three discards meaning you can discard up to five cards each three dis- each one so 15 cards to help you try to accrue uh, a better hand but it's 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 man it's so much luck and like i said there are there are runs that just everything works out and everything is perfect and you're like zooming and you're scoring uh, and there are other ones and it's just it's so disheartening when you have like it's i'm not gonna lie of all of the footage you're gonna watch that i've recorded i recorded 45 minutes of footage and the reason i recorded that much was because i kept i i, I think i restart like four times because i just kept getting bad runs um and it sucks but i mean you that being said it's the, like any road sometimes i restart after the first oh no for sure like if i feel like things are like i'm like i don't even want to waste my time because is there a chance Mm. is there a chance i could get that one joker that's going to change everything yeah but you know there's also a chance that i'm going to get shit and i'm going to lose the next hand anyway so you just just can't get out of credit card debt that's 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 the worst Uh, yeah (laughs) they have a joker called that's a credit card that will mm-hmm. let you go into into the negative by like yeah. um, $20. and dollars. Twenty. So you can $20. buy shit from the store, but now you have negative money, and now you start getting like tarot cards that that double the amount of money you have, but you're in the but negative. Doubles- so you're like, oh Fuck, no, I'm just yeah. I'm just more in the hole. I need to get. And the there, there is a uh, there's a so every blind uh, goes up by a little bit, and then every round has a boss blind, which generally uh, makes it more difficult. So sometimes mm-hmm. it'll be like, hey, every card you've played this ante. Um, it's debuffed it it doesn't score points uh, it it can't be used yeah. in, with your against your jokers that one sucks but there's one that it's like oh if you play a flush it sets your money to zero unless you're in the negative because yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, brutal like you. It, if there's one thing i wish that this game did it's that i i wish there there's all these different quote-unquote boss bosses boss blinds i wish i wish there was like just a little like different i don't they don't have to be jokers i don't know what they could be but just something like a visual representation of each of the different boss bosses, because it's just like a rule. They call it a boss, but it's just a weird rule restriction. And some of them are, are like, whatever, who gives a shit? One in seven cards is face down. I'll figure it out. And then some of them are just like completely run ending and it feels bad. Right. So, so, well, here's the thing, Brad, is it, it, to your point, they do feel random. And sometimes you'll go through a run and you'll never get a boss blind that like does anything to you. It's like every time it's like, oh, you can't use spades. And it's like, well, dude, like I've actually been manipulating my deck this whole time. So out of the the 60 cards that are in there, I only have like five spades. So it doesn't even matter. Or, yeah. or you know, it's like, oh, if you if you play a flush sets your money to zero and it's I'm, I'm actually I'm actually on a four of a kind. Uh, this run so it doesn't matter but then to your point there are some times where it's like i'm running a deck that like like focuses on hearts and it's like oh hearts are debuffed i'm like well fuck now that is a huge fucking like like run in there it it just it's so random and yeah it sucks sometimes but sometimes your jokers can be so powerful and synergize so well that like they do all the heavy lifting where you could just play like one card and like beat every round so so that that is the thing nick is is synergies synergies are what drives this game that is what lets you win is finding jokers that complement each other and that also complement your deck um to brad's point he, like he had mentioned vagabond well vagabond pairs well with something that earns you a lot of money that way if you're trying to use vagabond so you here's a couple of combinations just throwing it out there by no means an expert i think i have like 30 hours in the game so i'm like ah, that actually might be a lie i have a. Uh... I know 49 hours. Um, and so, well, how, how uh, much? 40 hours. 
forty nine uh, hours. A lot more than me. Yeah. Um. So vagabond. Um. If you play a hand and you have three dollars or less in your in your um in your pool of money, uh, it spawns a tarot card. Very nice. Um. There's another joker that every time you play a tarot card its multiplier oh, goes up fortune or the, the ad- addition of molt not a, not a straight multiplier but you plus x molt um and you pair that with like rocket or something that earns you a bunch of money after uh, a round all of a sudden those are going well together there are cards that it's like oh uh, the like the pants like the 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 whatever those pants are that they increase the value of two pair um so whenever you play two pair, which seems like it doesn't get you a lot of money, um, but if you c- combine that, two pair is a very easy hand to get. It's very easy to find uh, uh, two sevens and two fives or whatever. That's a very easy one. If you pair that with the multiplier that every time you like play a pair, it goes up uh, with uh, um, the the burned card, which it's easy to get two pair, so it's easy to to, to discard it as well. Um, all of a sudden, your molts are going up. You're you're getting increased levels. You're like things just like flow. But once and that's again, that's the sauce. That's the it, that's the sauce. But uh, that also depends on how things go. Like like I was saying earlier to Brad, sometimes you'll get to a store and there's a card you really need, but you don't have the money. Uh, and yeah, it's I mean, like, it's well, just like, the roguelike life, really. You know, it I is. Mean... And, and and so you know there was a while that i was just like flush pilled i was like every day every time i ran mm. i'm like i'm just going straight flushes if i can't get a flush i'm gonna discard it because flushes it, it it scores a decent amount uh um, it doesn't synergize with some of the really powerful stuff all that well yeah it's, so it, it, it always feels like there's a ceiling to like a flush build. it is funny i know like, like obviously like, i'm not gonna have time really for bellatro but i it is an interesting thing and I'm, i feel like in my brain so, i'm i I'm, I'm making connections I'm ma- I'm making connections to Queen's Blood because that's what I'm that, I'm playing a bunch what? of Queen's Blood and, and and it's not the same thing but that is also a game about synergizing cards together yeah, and like building decks absolutely. and stuff so and also you gotta you gotta remember like I just like I don't know how to play poker even though I've been taught Nick, so, like, that, so, that, time. so that's that's the nice thing about this game this is, is you don't poker. technically have to know how it's not you just technically need to poker. Hands. You have to know how to make hands. And like I said, if you click that run info button, it explains every hand, how it works. I know. If you click on the on the deck on the bottom right, it will show you every card that you have. It will show you uh, the, the number that are left, which can be frustrating because I think honestly, uh, it might have been earlier in this run. Um, I was like, all I need is a 10. All I need is a 10 and I can make this. I think it was like a straight flush, right? That's all I needed. I had three tens in the deck. I discarded eight cards not a single 10 like it's just like the everything else was already super low like the odds of me not getting that 10 were pretty fucking low but i didn't get it and that's how rng works but the thing is i still have not gotten to the clips i've seen online you can get to the point where people are doing like exponential things to the point where like the number they're scoring in this case is not i have 11 1120 points like they have to put ease in the number as, as if you're i forget yeah. what the term for that is what uh, the for, fuck? when when you're having to uh, adjust the period because the numbers are getting so large um that you cannot be expressed uh, across the screen and so it, it, it you know it, there are people not even getting billions there are people getting like trillions like they're like insane numbers but that's because every time you go up that next hand, it starts going exponentially higher. So the final score, the final uh, ra- hand or round in the in the in the game is a hundred thousand points. Like that's honestly not that much. The, but then that's that's anti eight. Uh, when you get to, I think I want to say anti eleven, it's like seven point two million. That's insane. From two two <laughs> two two rounds fast. later, from a hundred thousand to seven point two million. Like it yeah. goes up so quick. And at that, you know, you almost immediately know when you when you win, if you can go, you're like you om- like immediately you're like, hey, I know I'm not going to be able to scale. I can go the next like anti nine. Maybe I'll find the Joker I've been looking for, but you probably mm-hmm. won't. Um, anti anti 13 is 100 million. That's like, yeah, Damn. yeah, it, it's it gets insane. Um, I mean, yeah, is, so, is uh, this actually endless or does it? Um, probably not. I don't know what the the furthest someone's gotten is, mainly just because I've never even gotten close. Um, I yeah. don't know what my 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 high score is. I can probably look it up real quick. Endless, um, it's not that's, that high. That's funny. Endless is so extreme that it stops and it's called. Well, yeah, because it, well, it's 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 exponential. Like it, there, it yeah. gets to a point where even though it's quote endless, 
um, yeah. it, you you can't keep going um, just because that's not a thing. How do you see your? You got infinite score. That's impossible. Profile. You one. can't create loops. I don't w- think. Wing it. Winged got infinite score. Apparently. Um, so this game continues. Impossible. This game is still. Um, for those who are curious, I know it's it it it's, you know, this as of right now, as it stands right now. Obviously, it's only March. Bellatro is the highest, one of the highest reviewed games of the year outside of maybe Rebirth, but possibly. Yeah, it's going to be a game of the year contender, I think, in a lot of circles. I mean, this is going to come up on a lot of lists at the end of the year. I mean, it's, yeah, sort it's, it's very early in the year, and I know people really love it, but like, I think by the end of the year, people will have gotten really sick of this game and like mad at it, probably. I, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, I've I said it before, know. and I'll say it again, and we do need to move on, but Bellatro, like, sold a million copies, here's a million dollar idea. Sell packs of Joker cards. Oh my god. Oh my god, I would buy so many. With you know the chance of some being foil or hologram, probably Brad, Brad would oh. unabashedly I buy them so bad. Spend because money. because the actual like Joker design, the card design, th- they're fucking awesome. They're so cool, and like the effects, the like the foil effect and stuff, like it's so cool. I want them would, so bad. Would uh, you would you buy I want them to sell actual? Yes, actual packs of Joker cards. Actual there's glass 150 cards. Jokers or whatever, you know. Like how glass they, cards, glass cards. You would know though, right? Yeah, because you can make glass cards that have a one in four chance. You can make glass working. cards. You can make like you... stone cards. You can make stone gold cards, cards steel yeah. cards. You know, th- they could have the little seals as like the bubble gum in the pack. You know, like a little mm-hmm. red seal gum. Oh man! So, so I if would... I'm if I'm reading yeah. this correctly, Nick, I just kind of looked it up. Um, so, it, like I said, the farthest I've ever gotten um, is anti. Uh, eleven or twelve? I can't remember which. Um, anti sixteen. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I think uh, anti eleven. I think I've got. I, I, how do you see your? Does anybody know how I can see my high score in this game? Um, anti sixteen. Um, is eight point, uh, or sorry, eight hundred and sixty quintillion. What? Uh, is the score you have to beat on anti sixteen? Um, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, that's it's stupid. it's a lot. That's stupid. <laughs> Uh, hey, but yeah, I mean, when when you're when things are multiplying exponentially, I mean, you, you get there. And like, this is the vampire survivors of card games. Like, oh, I yeah, like I found it. it. So yeah, my highest ante is twelve. My highest round is thirty four. Uh, my best hand was seventy seven uh, million. Uh, was the hand uh, my the most played hand I have is a flush. I've played twelve hundred of them. Uh, really? See, like I feel like. I only play two pairs. And that's what I was like. I was asking about that in the Discord. Where it's like, I don't even understand how you, like, am I, do I not get poker? Like, do I not understand? <laughs> I mean, you, like, might cut, you might be in my like, boat. I don't know. Like, I don't, this game, this game makes me feel like uh, fucking Phil mean? Hellmuth, where I'm just like getting pissed off at the nature of the game, even though I'm playing it, you know? Like,. <laughs> So, so here's the good news. He's a famous poker player, by the way. Here's the good news (laughs) for you, Crispy, is that this is starting a whole new trend of like imitators of these, of, of, of Bellatro. Uh, there's a game that came out in early access last, uh, uh, yesterday actually called Bingle Bingle. It's basically the same exact concept, but it's roulette. How does that work? I don't know, but evidently it's getting so we're let, a, a we're good praise so far. Uh, we'll let, we'll see. We're let, we're um, but but all that being said, Crispy, to your your point of playing two pairs, um, I think it's so. First off, here's my thing. And if you, how many hours you said you were in ten? Uh, yeah, nine hours. Yeah. So here's the thing. So like any roguelike, um, you have to keep going to unlock jokers that will definitely change how you play and or uh, unlock new vouchers new decks um yeah and new decks how so you, you have to beat the vouchers with, by the way um buying the vouchers so when you buy a voucher in the store it will add to the pool of vouchers the next thing in its line so like the first one is okay, like oh okay. like a, a like a, a 20% discount in the store 10% discount whatever it is in the store once you buy that it gets added to the pool 
um, that mm. uh, then will here. maybe show up later. See, it's still a maybe. That's similar to like, um, uh, what is that banana card? Um, and you get like uh, the super banana. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah. So like Nick, there's a card that's like a banana, and what it does is it times your multiplier by fifteen. Pretty good. Uh, as uh, but yeah, thank you, uh, Michael Gross um is the banana card um but there's a one in four chance every round and when the round ends that the banana gets destroyed that's it's it, one in four seems pretty high unless you're trying to use a wheel of fortune um or a fair whatever okay. that card is um <laughs> uh, so wheel of no, that, that is like that, one in 300 I, wall carl and chad has a good point it's like video games be secretly making us into gamblers and that's what we sound like right now. uh i mean not i really. mean that's There's what no european lawmakers have been saying for years yeah, yeah. yeah. but anyway i mean like so going, mobile games going back that, to it Nick. this game going going back to it um it gets destroyed, right? So it's gone. But then the Cavendish gets added to the pool of jokers. And the Cavendish is another card uh, that is, is similar to the banana. Uh, but hold on. I'm, I want to get the exact stats. Um, we're, at, we're at an hour and we've only talked about I, I mean, trip. that's whatever. It's fine. Hold on. So so um, what the Cavendish is does is uh, it uh, adds a multiplier. What the, why is it so hard? Dude, Bellatro Wiki, stop being dumb, man. Um, so it, it, it's a times three multiplier. So the, the regular, the Michael gross is a plus 15. So it adds 15 to whatever your current multiplier is. This multiplies whatever it is by three. So generally probably a better thing, and, but it can destroy itself, but it's a one in 1000 chance. So hmm. way less likely I've never gotten the Cavendish and had it been, been destroyed. Obviously, hmm. you know, it's still odds and still numbers. So it still can, um, but man, it's it's crazy. And so, to, to Zelade's point, does counting cards work in this game? I mean, yes and no. Um, the only way counting cards. works is in relevance to if you're trying to go for a certain hand and you know what's in your deck, but it's not really counting. I mean, it's it's, it's all in front of you. So the, yeah. and, and so the point of Crispy, you know, and I know you said it tongue in cheek. Um, there, there's no gambling here. There's no. This is not going to make you better at poker. This is not going to make you better no, at gambling. I was really more it literally just, is it, just a roguelike game where the attacks and abilities are based on numbers yeah. Um, yeah. and patterns. That's all Papa it really Sh is. In chat says, well, uh, you, you, you can change a couple terms boxes. in this game. It. Loot boxes will make you into a gambler. Yeah. Would you true. Would you agree with Papa Shot? And he says, you change a couple terms in this game and it literally becomes Slay the Spire. Well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not far yeah, off. It's, it's a roguelike deck builder. Yes. I mm -hmm. asked that knowing almost nothing about Slay the Spire outside of what we talked about that but how, whatever but year that to, was to, to brad's point nick and what also crispy brought up earlier is having like gold cards and lucky cards and molt cards and seals it is a deck builder in the sense that if you just start with first off the default deck yeah it's a 52 deck of cards you know uh was that 13 um uh of each suit you know ace through two or whatever um but you can build this so first off other decks start differently there's decks that have no uh, face cards uh there are decks uh, there's the checkered deck which is just spades and hearts there's no clubs or diamonds um you can get new cards just from the shop which add cards or you could subtract cards there are some cards there are sometimes where it's like hey i don't want my deck to be 52 i want to remove as many things as i can from my deck because that increases the chances that i'm going to get the cards i need or i just want to pump those numbers up because there are jokers that uh, are affected by the number of cards in your deck it really is a deck builder like through and through so you get away from the standard deck pretty quickly yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, the hell of a game that I'm not. It definitely be is. It's it's one of those things where I'm, I like I said the reason I didn't want to play it uh, was because I knew I was going to sink fifty hours you, into you it. Know yourself, I've no not. You know I've yourself. I've 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 played the Yakuza once um, since mm. I picked this up, um, mm, and that's sad be because phone. I fucking love the Yakuza and I want to finish it and I'm still mm. planning on it. This um, game should be on a phone. Come on. I'm actually kind of surprised it's, it's coming not. out on phone, Brad. I'm sure it is, but I'm no, saying I'm that's gonna, you want to talk now. about but you want to talk about sales on on this game when it hits phones, it's going to be <clears> fucking <throat> insane. I am sure. Um, all right, I also, well, I also didn't realize. And sorry to just do real quick, Nick. Go ahead. Um, in the uh, in the if you go to uh, options and stats and card stats, it will show you the number of times you've had uh, the the top. It looks like top ten, maybe jokers your top 10 consumables top 10 tarot cards uh planet spectral and, and vouchers um it doesn't tell you the 
I don't, I'm not at least seeing the number of times I've chosen each individual deck. Like if I have a, a deck win over another, um, but that's some pretty good stats. My number one uh, card is the supernova, which it adds the number of times you've played a poker hand to your multiplier. It's pretty useful. Um, Damn. Yeah. Especially if you're playing like high card. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. But that's all I'll well, say. Uh, I'll say this Chris, crispy real quick. If you want to get off the two, I mean, the thing about two pair is like, if you're playing two pair, just play a pair. And if you're playing a pair, just play a high card. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, it's that depends on your it. jokers, Brad. That's, right? that can, I know it. That, that is a very that. high stakes uh, thing to do. To, to go, even two pair is risky unless you get the right jokers. Because while it will be useful, the first few, like the first ante or two, if you don't have the right jokers, you can easily <laughs> get screwed over. Hmm. Mm, yeah well mm, 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 you know what can you do all right <laughs> switch gears uh do we, here's a question do we want to take a break and Wait, then come back supernova is my highest as well <laughs> i think it's i think it's because it's the most hands played with a joker and when you have supernova you're trying to play as many hands as possible how do you check that that's true nick if you well, want to let's, let's fading out oh, hold on <laughs> nick yes i agree let's take a break Let's and take a break. You were gonna say after that, yeah, as we keep nerding out about Bellatro, we'll be right back. All right, rewind. Starting over. Hey, everyone, welcome back to the show. Um. I want to go in a completely different direction for a hot mm. second. Mm. Uh, and I want to revisit Final Fantasy VII Rebirth for a second. I had this grand plan this past week that I was going to try and like really push through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth um, because I want to be prepared for Dragon's Dogma 2, and I'm also juggling uh, Persona 3. Also, if you're watching footage, I do apologize. This color might be a little washed out because of my oh, HDR little. setting or something. So I apologize, but whatever. Anywho, um, my plan didn't go very well. I am still only about 45, somewhere around the 45 hour mark in, in, in Rebirth. But um, I don't know where y'all stand. Uh, Nolan, I know you haven't started it yet. Chris Davis has finished it. Brad, are you yep. still playing this? What does that mean? Yeah. I mean, are you still actively playing? I guess I'm at, is, And Crispy, what about you? Are you... You're not... No, I'm playing like three other RPGs at the moment. Oh god! I, and I haven't even played. I haven't even played remake. So like, I'd have to. Like, oh. my plan right now is okay. to finish Like a Dragon, which I've gotten a lot farther in, and then play Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, and then maybe play Final Fantasy VII Remake, and then maybe play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in so, the year 2020, 2026. I don't, I don't fucking know. I'm, I might be dead before I ever touch this oh, game. God. I don't know. Like. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's one way of looking at it for sure. Um, so we talked about it the other the other week, and I, I think we had a fair, I think we had a pretty balanced approach to it in terms of like things that we really liked about it. Think, in fact, things that we loved about it, with a fair share of things that you know critiques of the game. Um, and as I get farther, and I'm gonna be totally honest, some of this might be there might be a little bit of bias squeezing itself in here because I'm like stressing out trying to finish this game and in, in, in like under like a yep, uh, usually not a time good... limit. Not a great way to play a game like this, I, I suppose. Um, but game. also, there's just I've spent a lot more time now running around these big open spaces in this world. Mm. And you just don't respect your time. And you That's the thing. Does you being rushed and still wanting to do everything is a problem. Well, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. There, are, and this is the way I usually approach most open, quote unquote, open world games, is because I don't have time to do one hundred percent everything. I don't want to one hundred percent everything. I'm usually pretty good at identifying the kinds of quests and the kinds of things, activities you can do in an open world that interest me, and focusing on those. And I'm that's kind of my approach. That's what I'm doing here. So I don't really actually have a lot of issue with the way they have designed the more open aspects of this game. I think I feel like a lot of people are start. You know, some people are starting to compare this to like you know Ubisoftification of an open world game and just you know map full of icons and whatnot. I don't really feel that way about this game. The the no. way this game doesn't respect my time 
is that it refuses to let, like if you're if you if you were in a if you enter into a conversation with anybody you are fucking locked in until that person is done talking uh which sometimes is excruciating i had this moment last night and this is what prompted me to like jump into discord and start just kind of like man something about this game is really fucking pissing me off and it's like i started talking i walked up to this group of children in one of the towns or whatever and started talking to them and they started talking to me about some like bird that they needed help finding and it was instantly i was instantly done with the conversation i was like this is you, that is this very is boring like rush build. this is, this is rush dull build, i don't build, like rush build. I do not. No, no, no. I, I just I was like, because there's also such an there's such an obvious disparity between like the pro, like the production quality and the writing quality of like a quest that has anything to do with the main characters and something that is very clearly just filler. Well, I mean, the, the real problem is that it's again, like I was talking about the last time we did this, uh, it's it, the interaction going on with the animation. It's it's different every single scenario so sometimes you can skip dialogue and get through it fairly quick but yeah you can skip some if the character if the npc is doing an animation it won't you have to wait for that skip. animation to play. yeah honestly i i i jumped mm-hmm. towards like being stuck in dialogue sequences and what i really wanted to kind of like drill in was the animations that you're locked into like and the biggest example i can think of right now and this is driving me freaking nuts is I'm in the Corel region and I got the buggy, you know, which is a thing that you did in the original in Final Fantasy VII, which is, and it's great to see here. It works great functionally, but mm-hmm. every time you get in and out of the buggy, you have to watch Cloud, like open the door, climb the little ladder, Whoa, move man. between the like seats into the front, long. into the driver's Nick? seat, and Nick, sit down. And then when say... you get out of the, when you get out of the buggy, he does the, he has to do the exact opposite. Hey, Nick. It, it's pain. You not only are you right, but you're also rush pilled, <laughs> and uh, you're feeling this way because Hustle, you're in a hurry and you want to get done. Well, with no, no, it. no, no. Listen no, to me. I mean, I look, had the same problem with the if, with, with the remake with the with part one. Nick, I had the same problem. But listen, listen. If this was my line of argumentation, and it was for a little game called Red Dead Redemption Two. <laughs> You'd be making all kinds of excuses of like, look, man, I'm just soaking in the the world and I'm going hunting for days at a time. I don't think it's I don't think it's the same. Very I don't think it's the same. Slow at all. moving, forced I don't animations. Think it's, you can only walk through camp because, you know, he would never run through camp. I'm I don't just think saying, it's the same at all. I I'm not saying it's, it's literally the same, but I'm saying like a lot of the complaints you have with animations and slowness and stuff, which I think are valid are a lot of the complaints that some people have with something like a Red Dead Redemption 2, which wanted to take it slow and value the and animation. So what is, okay, first being of all, a cowboy. What is your, I don't really know what your point is. I, th- I think these are totally two totally different situations. I'm saying, I'm saying in that game, you didn't feel bothered by it because you weren't in a hurry. Not even in the slightest, it, it, no. You know, because you weren't in a hurry. It, like you, you, in fact, in fact, some of your, your most passionate conversations Why, okay, about Red Dead Brad, Redemption 2. do you want me to not? Was it, no, no, no. What is the uh, okay, stop, stop for I'm a saying, second? Stop for a second. Listen, no. Do you want me to have this conversation? Do you want me to even have no, these no, critiques? No, no, just just let, let me finish my sentence. I'm saying some of your most passionate conversations you've had you had about Red Dead Redemption 2 were about kind of like how you did like to kind of take your time and let the you know your you know and go off camping let, and just enjoy let the breeze scenery and blow through your it, tits. Yeah. Yeah, but, and that's it, I'm saying you were describing something that was very much the opposite of being rushed, right? You were describing something of like taking your time, you know, with art. I felt right? engaged I mean, I, and impressed and just here's the thing. Like I know, but if you were if you were like reviewing that game and you were rushing through it, you'd probably be like infuriated by the slowness of it. I mean, I I think also you have to take into account like the quality of the writing of that interaction. Dude, like, the writing there's has almost has everything to do with it in this absolutely. case. I don't think this can hold but a I'm candle. I'm not talking about like there's 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 at one animations. in one game you have you, this cowboy that you're interacting. You know that you're going to go off on this grand narrative quest with rock star writing that's going to that has this absurdity that's delightfully entertaining to it. And then and like this, 
you you go to a, a lady and she wants you to collect her chickens, but you have to hear her talk about That's all about her chickens. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about animations getting in and out of things and it being very slow. You're, and I agree with it, but I'm saying... But you're, like, you know, deciding to use it as an opportunity to, like, turn my opinions about Red Dead Redemption 2 no, against me. I'm saying that you might be right when you say but you're, you might you're be, using you might it to bias you're, because you're in a hurry. I, but I'm, that's not, I would feel you this way sad. whether I was in a hurry or not. I mean, I said I'm in a hurry because I want to play Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'm also very much enjoying my time with this game. Anytime I'm doing anything that has to do with the main quest, anytime I'm doing something that has to do with the grand story of yeah. running around this world with, with Tifa and Aerith and Barrett and Red 13 and, and chasing after Sephiroth and having these really nostalgic moments that remind me of the original. I think it's phenomenal phenomenal it's it's when i start to like be like okay i want more of this so like like here's the thing i'm playing red dead redemption 2 and i'm like this 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 world this immersion this like this level of immersion is so incredible i want more of it so i'm gonna do all these side quests and there's no disparity between the quality of a main quest and the quality of a side quest in fact some of the side quests are just as good if not better than the main quest shit here i was just talking about slowness of animations we're not comparing the two games you are you're, literally you're right. turning an argument against me and then and then getting defensive when i sit here and i'm tell not you literally huge comparing the two games one for one I, I was just making a point about My the slowness God. of animations and being locked into that kind of thing and getting frustrated with it that's it that's it i feel like i'm i feel like i'm in like a debate with you and you just are shut no me i'm down. saying I, I i'm i'm not gonna the debate isn't hey the side quests and rebirth are just as good as red dead redemption 2 i'm not saying that that's absurd, absurd thing to say. So you don't need to like affirm that part of that comparison. I'm just saying. I, I just don't be. know why you even brought Red Dead Redemption Two into this. Then I guess I is my I question. I explained it well. That's fine. You, you um, I'm playing Rebirth as well, and you know you're right. <laughs> it's Go for it, Brad. Take it away. But some of but the thing is, some of this side quest stuff lead leads to like a lot of really cool moments and like mini yeah. games and stuff like did yeah. you do all the fort condor stuff hey dude i'm not even at fort condor what oh you're talking about like the the, the little board game yeah the proto well thing. i mean you yeah do, i mean i, I, mean, I, I played condor, a couple that the fort condor quest line is in the junon area just like it yeah. is in the original i played a few things of it i mean i didn't stick with it too i've played way more queen's blood than but, fort but, condor no, okay but queen's blood is a whole other thing what i'm saying is fort condor is like this really you know developed like quest line which is really cool because you know they're getting sucked into the game and it's hilarious animations and stuff and like it's a developed game that keeps going and there's even like a fucking hard mode or whatever that's right. just one not, of the side quests in this game i have but, not like, done like all, there are done, like, some side quests that are whiffs right but like you know i'm always looking because sometimes it does lead to some like really cool stuff like that and um you know i think i think the problem is, is, is prickly the, right the you problem know? is it has its ups and downs but it's when you start if, if it, it's 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 weird it's different it's unique it's frustrating at times but it's so unbelievably good and charming at other times and it's not a smooth experience but i think a smooth experience is kind of a lame one sometimes and i'm glad that this game is is like absurd and weird and prickly i love all that too i love yeah. all that too i don't i don't know i don't know what to say to that i mean i and I, 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 and I stand by this because I just, I, I don't think being in a rush has anything to do with, with this because I would feel this way no matter what the scenario was. I'm literally, when I, when I see a side quest or an opportunity to pursue a side quest, it's a fucking gamble. You know, is this going to be a, a good thing or is it going to be a, just a dreadfully boring thing? Um, like the green, and, you're talking about the green side quests. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Going to uh, the, the thing is, going I, I to like a nothing, board and, there's not and getting so a many, quest, and nothing has been so tragically bad that, like, you know, the thing is, I like the combat, right? And and, and if the side side quest involves combat, I mean, so you you're both right, but at the same time, like, I do I do feel like I'm taking my time, and this really hasn't been bothering me, and. I, I mean, but I, I may mean, I get it. We're different people. It's just um so I, don't know. I, I, will, I, I had no. I had the same I had the same complaints, same concerns when I played part one. I was hoping that finally getting out of Midgar and having more open areas 
seeing how they approach open areas would maybe uh, alleviate some of those concerns, some of those problems that I have with that original. And to some extent, they do. But I don't know, man. I, 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 I find myself... I think the bigger flaw in the design might be that it's taking all the shit in one area and putting it in another and putting it in another and putting it in another. Like the, the verbs are repeated in big major chunks all throughout the game. So if you're trying to do everything in an area, I'm not trying to do everything though. I'm not, yeah, but I'm, I'm not, but I am. So, okay. I, but I am. So like you get kind of like sick of that formula because they're kind of like lifting it and like putting it in a different area. And I think that's when it can get a little tiresome. So I do. I mean, to that point, I think what is one of the things that alleviates that repetitiveness is your method of transportation. And when I say that, I mean your chocobos. Because in each region, they are different. And as you progress, they get to be more and more interesting mechanics for traversal with them. Mm. Mm. Uh, I won't I won't say what they do, but damn, every single area you go to, the next chocobo is so much better than the previous. Mm. It's cool, but it's also like I, I think about I think about what chocobos were in the original. Um, and obviously there's going to be concessions made and there's a lot of examples of like taking things that were in the original and finding really new and new ways to kind of adapt them for this format, because obviously this is a very different kind of game than the, than the original and the chocobos are no different, but like the chocobos were a big deal in the, in the original and I, you know, maybe I haven't gotten far enough yet. Is I don't know if there's chocobo breeding in this game, but the chocobo Ooh. breeding side quest in that mm. original game are they submissive such... and breedable? <laughs> yes, God damn it, <laughs> they are. I no, really but like, like chocobo breeding well, in that original game was such a huge side quest. Well, and it... can I offer some insight here? Sure. Like, I haven't been playing this game, but like, kind of just going off the conversation and what you're saying, Nick. I think maybe part of what you're running into is that like you just don't like games with big swords like you don't like big fuck off swords and really it is egregious it doesn't make any fucking sense how does he swing that thing it's too fucking big yeah Uh, (laughs) all right (laughs) fuck y'all i tried (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Nick, if me. you if you want an answer to the chocobo breeding question i can answer it but no i don't want an answer this is i don't really want, really want spoilers here I, maybe in look, the next one <sighs> look i think i think this is i still think this is a fine game i'm enjoying i'm enjoying the hell out of it these side quest things like we <laughs> talked a lot about how i felt about side quests in that original game and i still feel the exact same way about them here i think most think of them are improvement th- huh i don't Man. think there's more of them, and by by as a yeah, result, no, there yeah. are more good ones than there were in the original, but there are just as many shitty ones. Uh, yeah, well, I like, think the real problem is that there are I think still the ratio ones. is about the same. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I think that the, I think the side quests do get a little bit more interesting narratively uh, as you progress through the game. I think the problem is that a good most of these side quests are based around fucking mini games. And it becomes incessant at times, like truly fucking annoying. Like you're in a region where you're going to get a, a, a side quest that you're going to have to do in which the mini game is like the worst idea they possibly could have come up well, with. Well, Final Fantasy seven was a game full of, I understand that. Oh, I played that game bad. through like three times. I remember this has more and they're of course. so much worse. That fucking Rocket League thing sucks ass. What? <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Back up? Uh, yeah. Rocket League with cats. <laughs> yeah. But like, mm-hmm. the shooting gallery well, stuff dogs. was cool. I like the shooting yeah. gallery. That was fun. Uh, I actually think I enjoyed the Rocket League stuff more than I enjoyed the, 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 the shooting gallery. I mean, it's, it's um, not the fact that they exist. It's the fact that they're mandatory. Like, if yeah. you do not yeah, I mean, do them, right. you cannot that's, progress. That's like, that's like interesting. Probably. But but you never have to like play that much of them. Um, I don't know. It's such a weird. It's a, we we can move like on. I mean, here's doing the thing. Each one once, right? Or no, it I mean, comes back, right? No. That. Yeah, and in mid game there is a refresh where you get more stuff to do out in the world, and those things come back, and you have well, to the do world. them. Out in the world. Oh, you have to look. Do them. All I, uh, Queen's blood. Sure. All I want to say, I guess, is I'm. 
still really enjoying this game, but it's kind of crazy that like I'm now going I'm like 40 to I'm somewhere in the 40 to 46 hour range. And I'm like at this point, I'm going like five or six hours at a time between those moments right the moments that like call back to final night like things make you go oh my god it's this moment i remember this moment i love this moment this is so cool i'm going like five or six hours between those moments because i'm spending so much time running around the world it's still again i'm not trying to do everything i'm i'm kind of laser focused on the things i know i want to do in each area and i'm doing those and i'm just kind of casually exploring what are those things out of curiosity the summons are a big part of like going around the world and finding all the the uh and that's a pretty like lame task, but I mean, but it, it, it's a lame task that earns me summons that I can then use in battle because I love you. I've yeah. always loved using summons it, in battle. So the, the I'm going to do whatever I have to for those. The task for getting summons isn't lame. It's the actual having to fight those summons in a virtual environment. That's the, that's nah, I mean, no, they're both lame. They're both they're, lame. You could say they're both lame. I think well, everything leading up. Look, no, hitting the buttons is, is like fun for you. What are you talking? No, no, about? What? in the circle. No, I'm I'm talking about like the idea of like actually collecting that intel to lower the difficulty of that fight. Look, the, everything having to do with summons is, and again, I've said this before. I can't speak for Final Fantasy 14, so y'all, so Final Fantasy 14 people don't skewer me for this, but like, I feel like they have pretty much kind of like fucked up the use of summons in every Final Fantasy game since maybe 10. Uh, Wait, what? Does that we, 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 we all... I mean, because I, I, I don't we know the, how summons work in 14. We had this conversation last... Oh, there uh, are no summons in 14. They're just bosses, and they're incredible. Well, okay, but no, like... That's true. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of lame, too. <laughs> it's not lame, because if you want a game well, with summons, you should play like a dragon. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I mean, I mentioned fair. that last time as that well. Mazes. I mentioned that. How amazing! Right. Look, um, no, I don't know. Y'all, don't know. y'all need to. Go. Also, need to Kate further... Sith, like that doesn't fucking Chief work, King, right? right? <laughs> What's wrong, Kate Sith? Dude, I mean, like I in would... this like hyper realistic style, like this is not hyper realistic. Like all I can think of, <laughs> I mean, no, like it's more than like the little eight or like sixteen bit blobbies that they used to be. Right. Like mm. looking at that little cat person with his little crown, all I can think of is that like ET tweet where that guy's like me and my friends would have killed him with hammers. I can tell you that much. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's not okay. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> I don't know. I oh, I like fuck, I, I like right every that. single characterization of every character in your party in this game. No, yeah, they're great. Uh, let me tell you, I was not ready for Kate Sith's voice. Was not ready for oh, it. No, I was yeah, not either. either. You know what? Cybel Cybel uh, is absolutely also, correct. I'm so sorry. Uh, summons in Final Fantasy XIV are relegated to an entire class called the Summoner, and it's right. pretty sick. <laughs> okay, so you can become a Summoner and use summons in yeah. Um, it's okay. like your whole it's like your whole thing right so yeah, like the your original you assessment that. that there are only boss fights was not correct uh I see that is saying. correct but also rebuttal you're a little bitch <laughs> <laughs> look that's why i'm sure they're actually probably pretty great in 14 uh but 12 13 15 uh, 16 it, and now this i think easy. they're all kind of a mess um and they're you know that is a what mess. it is Y'all? I think they're kind of a mess, right? Look, I, got, I, I think I they think, suck I think in the, this game. If we're being no, I think they. Real I think here. I think earning. The, I mean, I like using them more than I've liked using summons in it. <laughs> Whatever. I, I don't want to get into this debate again. My Waste my point TV. is my point is, and I, and I this is just one of those things. Now that I've I played like eighty hours of sixteen, I played through Final Fantasy Seven Part One. I'm playing this, and I'm in, I'm enjoying my time with it enough. Man, I just I just Final Fantasy. I don't think means. The same to me as it did. Oh it no! And then, oh, Nick's grown up. To get to your up and left Neverland. <laughs> no, no, and no. It's it's. I wish I could get back you to Neverland. Back. You like, can't go back. Nick, You'll you never, can never go home. You Walk in the middle age. This is what they. This is what this was all. Ooh. This is what they meant. Your uh, midlife crisis like, just around the corner, Nick. You you're just, just gonna go. you're gonna grow to resent that which you love. But hey, like, it's not my fault. I just feel like they've kind of like stumbled with like every major entry since. Like literally, well. literally, it is debatable if like when Aerith is like, no, like what does she say? 
we got to talk business <laughs> to Tifa or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Like that's maybe better than anything in the last five Final Fantasies. Probably. No, no, look. look but again. also the ones you played on PlayStation 1. Dude, you know, no, I'm telling look, you, look. Like, it's so good. No. Well, remember in Final Fantasy 15 when they went camping with Coleman camping gear? <laughs> yes, I Dude, recall. That, that was is... pretty good. <laughs> Fuck off. No, look, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, I agree this with you, Brad. This is a dream game. <sighs> no, it is. It is. Because believe me, Final Fantasy VII, as it, I'm sure it does to many people on this call, All right, means nine, a lot. Right. It me. means so much to me. All right, Final Fantasy Except for nine, boy. Except for Chris. Dude, fuck off. Yes, Final Fantasy IX means more to me than seven, but seven is also a huge part of my just my own personal gaming history. Like, it was the, the it was probably the first, quote unquote, like, hardcore video game i ever played right like from start to finish it was like oh my god video games are kind of amazing this was this was the game so it means a lot to me and those moments when this game calls back to that game are fucking incredible but i'm going five or six hours between those moments and that sucks um well hey, whatever. like i what said are we you're just, game has you're just awesome now moments. i mean Mm-hmm. The robed, just... the robed guys are dog shit though. Can we all agree there? Like this whole like MacGuffin of we gotta follow the robed guys, complete fucking dog shit. In the original is like they're following Sephiroth and and like reports of Sephiroth. That was fine. Why does it have to be these dumb robed guys? And by the way, it's Glenn. Who the fuck is Glenn? Glenn, <laughs> so stupid. The Nomura shit is so. Gr- <sighs> Let's move on from this topic. Mm. If, if that, that's going to sure be a are, big point of uh, discussion back, when we eventually do our spoiler cast. Like it's, uh, I, I will say, compared to the cast. original, so on, it feels a little bit more like comprehensive as to exactly why you're going from X Y to Z place. Because like in the original, yeah, you know you're following Sephiroth. But there's no like cohesive glue as to like why you're going to the gold saucer or this place no, or why. No, no, the robe guys suck. No, it no, was fine. I, I, I agree. They make it a little better once you get further into the game because they actually talk about I, the robe guys and like what's the mechanics with them. Yeah, don't try no, and. But that makes it better for you, not for me. I mean, we're just different people. I still the robe guys are. They I, sucked I, in the remake, and they suck here. I called. I called last week's podcast or the last podcast we did. Everybody hates Chadley. This episode <laughs> is going to be called "Brad hates the robed guys." And it's no, just, everybody <laughs> hates the robed well, guys. Well, Chris say Davis that. doesn't apparently, so I can't say no, everybody. He hates I, them too. I don't <laughs> like them. I don't hate them. See, I now, can't say I can't say everybody. There's Anyways, an event later in the on. game that explains it, which I I appreciate for the narrative. But you are you are also admittedly like obsessed with having things explained to you. I mean, I didn't want to say it. Nick said it for me. I mean, that can be good sometimes. That can be good sometimes. I don't necessarily think this is going to be one of those moments. Yeah, explanation me. and connections don't make something good inherently. I mean, it's no. Just... If it's a shit reason, it's a shit reason. See, wing it oh, says wait, Chris Davis shit. is a lore man, but like I would say I'm also a lore man, but like mm, you know, I, I think you're less of a lore man than you than you think. You're more of a, you know, uh you're more of a uh, eh? plot man. <laughs> you're, oh, you're, a, uh, you're not you're not a lore man, you're a vibes guy. Yeah, you're a I vibes am a vibes guy. guy. I'm you're definitely a vibes, a vibes guy. guy. For like, you sure. Know, like, atmosphere what, guy. Yeah, I mean like you probably can't tell us the deep lore of rdr2 but those vibes immaculate i can't know? tell you yeah. the deep lore of rdr2 i can't oh Probably oh, okay. Chris Davis oh, oh what okay okay was, no, no, no no we're moving what on year was moving blackwater on. established nick <laughs> that's just <laughs> dude let's have a rdr2 lore is it like 1910 and nick blackwater 1910 no if that's, uh, that's 19 okay never mind no no, so, that was a trick question. I don't even know a... if that town's called Blackwater, Nick. <laughs> there is, is a it? town called Blackwater. Is it yeah. Blackwater? We yeah. can't go back to Blackwater. Some like, shit like the that. like the mercenary company. Okay, Brad, okay. tell us about Unicorn Overlord. God damn it! Can't okay, at the well, end like another like a uh, the bitch game yet again. Damn it! <laughs> but, uh, before we do that, I just want to say uh, real yes, quick, Bradley Rose tonight because. 
Hold hold on, Brad. You just froze, and I lost everything that you just said. So you're probably gonna have to repeat yeah. it. I didn't say anything yet. Well, I, you were just... talking when you froze, and then you were talking when you unfroze. So go ahead. But no, Chris Davis was gonna say something. I just want to say, I look. I know both of you aren't gonna be rebirth until probably May, but like, oh, can sorry. we plan? Oh, I'm gonna finish that this month. Uh, bullshit. Yeah, that ain't <laughs> happening. This so, guy. like, can we plan on doing a spoiler cast? Because I really want to talk about this with someone who's. We're waiting it. on Nick to finish Baldur's Gate to do our spoiler cast. Uh, you know, we're just. I hate you, I yeah, hate Nick. you so much. Hurry up I and finish you. Baldur's Gate, Nick. He's, he's anti rush whoa, whoa, whoa. filled with Baldur's Gate. Crispy, why don't you finish Baldur's Gate? Oh, how do you know I haven't? Because I'm pretty <sighs> sure you haven't. Good guess, but still. <laughs> yeah, but he's got like 18 points. Yeah, but how did he know? <laughs> he's tracking your steam history. That's still. Where did the lighter fluid come from? It is weird because you got really close to at least one of your playthroughs. Your original. No, I am real. I, I, I didn't get really. Like, stop talking in the past tense. Like, it's still ongoing. It's, go, it's happening, okay? Yeah, so am I. I God beat the murder it. tribunal, okay? I got closer. Yeah. I'm closer. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, there are entirely Wait, too many too games that are fucking too long coming out no. too close no. together. This is insane. It's insane. I can't. You can't keep up with it. I know. What's going to be your Baldur's Gate 3 of this year, though, Nick? Rebirth, what, probably. What's the one that you're going to say is brilliant, but you're going to keep putting off for years? Infinite Wealth? No, no, I don't think, I don't don't think that's that shit. You're not going to play Infinite Well? I haven't played a... I've never played a Yakuza game in my life. Okay, but you should play Like a Dragon. He's like my wife with Captain right Crunch. He's like my what? wife and Captain Crunch. What's wrong with Captain Crunch? Did, did I not explain the, the Captain Crunch? I guess we no, don't have a I podcast. No. So I found out my wife is 35 years old, okay? You found, found out, out your wife is 35? <laughs> oh, thank God. Me, <laughs> she told me that she's never had Captain Crunch in her life. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, you grew up in a house that didn't buy Captain Crunch. That's fine. She also said she never, she, she's never had Captain Crunch because she thinks she won't like it, which is fine. I mean, maybe not fine. That's fine. Whatever. You know, she's, she's kind of a picky yeah. eater. Also, we had Captain Crunch in the house because I eat Captain Crunch and I'm like, okay, well, we have Captain Crunch. Now's the time to try it because a, she likes cereal. B, she likes kids' cereals. She'll eat that shit, oh, right? For whatever reason, she's like, no, I'm going to keep the streak alive. I refuse to even take a, eat a bite of Captain Crunch because I think I won't like it. And at that she's, point, I'm like, that is not normal. That is not a picky eater thing. You are being weirdly stubborn. You're an that insane. That actually person. sounds like something my wife would do, too. That's all. I don't know if you're not, not about Captain Crunch, but... <laughs> I also know people who are similarly stubborn, and they're just people who are like, it's almost, it's, I don't want to say they're stubborn just because they don't want to be proved wrong, but I think it's also kind of like a, hey, you know what? I've lived my life this long. I don't think this thing's going to change my life. The first time she 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 eats Captain Crunch, it's like a recall bag. I had a bowl of cereal, and I was like, you can have just a bite. And she'll be like, nope. I'll have nothing. You know, like what? like when Nolan's oh, on a plane God. and they have no Dr. Pepper. He's like, well, we have other drinks. And he's like, no, thanks. I'll have Dr. Nothing. Pepper's your airplane drink? Okay. It's mine, too. That oh, was no. one time yeah. when me and Brad were on a plane together that I didn't want any other, other drinks. Listen, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes like these preferential things, they get kind of attached to the part of your brain where you like keep your your sense of self identity, right? Like, like part of her identity is not knowing what Captain Crunch tastes like. She did, she's like, probably never even thought about the fucking cereal. Like, like for more than two seconds, she's not yeah. creating an identity around it. That's what's no, so crazy. But, about. but, the thing but is, it is a minuscule part. It's like, if I, if I, if I eat the Captain Crunch, I have to let go of this, like this, she, this, this burden I've carried my whole life. For example, it's like, it's like Nick in like tales from the borderlands, right? No, he listen, doesn't want listen, us to be right. That's what it is. That's what it is. I was going to say, listen, I've gone 37 years of my life without playing Bellatro, and I think I'll make it the rest yeah, of but you know, that's, you're just That's dumb. not how that works. But that, yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, so I didn't press her on it because I knew if I did, it would eventually become, well, I'm not going to try Captain Crunch out of spite, which is something I understand. Spite 
is a relatable thing. So I didn't want it to become spite. <laughs> but but at the point when it's in the house, she eats cereal. She likes sweet things. It's just there, you know. You know, if she had some story of like, oh, I heard from another kid that it scratched up the roof of their mouth or something. Oh, it's just true. Yeah. Holy, it's yeah. true. Sometimes you got to suffer for the sweetness. You know what I'm saying? After a week, oh, and I God. wasn't pressing her on it. I did buy another box of Captain Crunch, cinnamon Captain Crunch, which I never had before because she, had, she likes cinnamon cereals. I'm like, maybe this is like the Trojan horse. Here's what you Eventually, do. Here's what you do, Brad. You, you, you take her cereal that she likes. You take the bag out. You put the Captain Crunch in that box, what, and you she hope not, she, she just doesn't. Blind. She's not a or, blind person. No, no, you're right. That's a stupid <laughs> idea. What you what you really want to do is wait until she's asleep, and then when she like, if she ever starts like snoring or oh, something, no. just kind of like plink little like Crunch Berries into her mouth like while she's sleeping. I haven't been pressing her on it. I just have it around oh, the house. That could have been. She eventually came so to bad. me for on the Heimlich. I'll try them, but only dry. <laughs> and I'm like, no. No deal. If you, if, if what? You wait, 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 wait. You, you gotta try let her milk. try. No, fuck that. I've never eaten Captain, Captain Crunch, Crunch is with a milk. milk. A, you, a I've milk never eaten cereal. Captain Crunch with milk. I don't eat any cereal with milk. That's ridiculous. You're setting. Well, she does. If, if she if she got to the point where she was like, I'm gonna try it, but without milk, and you said no deal. Like now you're the asshole. A thousand percent Cap- your Captain fault. Captain Crunch is a weird texture, right? Well, because I don't want How her to serious. judge on not having it. Be, be a milk because Captain Crunch it absorbs the milk unlike other cereals. Okay, you know? as a host, I'm putting my foot down for a second. Okay, okay we got to talk about Unicorn what Overlord before we on? do that. Before we do uh, that, we should have been I playing just... the Unicorn Overlord footage while we but, talked about <laughs> Captain Crunch. No, but real quick, real quick. I just want you all to know, yeah, I've Unicorn made it 37 Cap- years of my life, and it finally happened last week. 37. I got up. I got up in the morning, getting ready for work. Right. I'm like, I'm running short on time. Your pants. I'm gonna just have some cereal <laughs> this morning. Right. Pour some cereal into a bowl, take the milk out, pour the milk into the bowl, lift it to my mouth, put it in my mouth. Guess what? Fucking milk is spoiled. Mm. The most disgusting thing that's ever. And I'm sure you didn't let it ruin your day. Uh, it ruined. It ruined my morning. It was pretty. I had to like go what like brush he, my teeth, rinse my mouth is, out like four saying? times. What is the first thing he did for the first time in 37 years? Ate spoiled I, milk without ate, realizing it was I, spoiled. Yeah. Oh. Like, people talk about spoiled milk, but I don't think many people have actually ma- had it make it make its way like into your mouth you before you realize it that it's spoiled. You, you no, no, no. I milk. even here's the thing. Here's the crazy thing. I I didn't smell it, but I did. Smelled I did the date check on the th- on yeah. the carton. It oh, was still trust. eight days away from the expiration that date, so I was like, matter. this is fine. And I didn't smell it. I didn't. That was the crazy thing. I didn't fucking smell it, even when I'm like, you know, trust literally, it's. It is a it is an involuntary action. I unscrew the cap because we're in America. Yeah. We don't have bagged milk or anything. You unscrew the cap and you immediately lift it to your nose and sniff it. I mean, every it time. is now. That listen, is now something I'm going to do listen, every single time. This is just time. what you fucking deserve for being a goddamn dirty milk drinker. Like, <laughs> it's unnatural. <laughs> like, it's Robin unnatural. Said, yeah. We're the only animals in the world that drink milk after our infancy. Like, this is just, you know. No, that was that's the funny thing. Like Robin Fucking hates milk, it, bitch. Ro- Robin hates milk, so I was like, "Can you smell this? Tell me if this smells bad." Because I could, even after that, I was like smelling. It. I was like, she "I can't hate milk. It's smell. always gonna smell bad." And to she her. was like, "She's like, I hate milk. I'm always gonna make yeah. that face." So, yeah. Uh, anyways, unicorn overlord. Unicorn overlord. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm All right. So how many wait. unicorns so, uh, are? Chris Davis, are you gonna play this soon? No. <laughs> no. No. I don't have. No. I can't. I can't. I'm go. I put. 96 hours into a JRPG followed by another 83 hours into another no. JRPG. I, I can't I, right now. Huh? I think he's... Oh. What does that mean, though? You're this is a game like, that's going to be like play? 50, 60 hours long for me. I can't right now. I need something shorter. Oh, play Pacific I mean, Drive. It's play fantastic. That's not what she said. Or whatever? Are you passing on this game? No, no, I fucking bought it. It's right there. Don't point to some shit on your shelf, dude. That does not mean shit. Did you see the bikini witch with the boobs? I mean, like... (laughs) Wait, is that... Uh, Spent like $103 in this game. I'm going to fucking play it. $103? What? $130? $130? Collector's Edition, man. Come on. It's fucking vanillaware. It's got a huge art book inside it. Oh, my God. How many, book you know how many Japanese game. games Nick has purchased over the years? Like 700. You know how many he's finished? Like how many Final Fantasies are there? That's how many. 
<laughs> that is not fair. It's, no, he it's, never finished uh, 14. That's true. That's Nobody true. finishes yeah, 14. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Unicorn Overlord. We did talk about it when I played the demo, which was kind of the original game. But I have been playing. This is like the main game I've been playing. And I've been playing a lot of it. I'm like over 35 hours in now. I figured out. Um, so I've been playing a lot of it. And one of the things I didn't really talk about, or I didn't get to show on the, the last time I talked about it, was kind of that this is sort of this open world game where you're just kind of running around the map. Uh, you know, it's not just a battle to battle to battle game, which is a lot of strategy RPGs are. This is a game with a world and you're, there's like side quests and like secrets and stuff and towns and like stuff to do in those towns. Um, you know, and it's cool. It, like this is a one one thing I've realized is that this is a supremely addictive game. Like it, like it's you get into like really addictive loops of um, you know going from battles and then the rewards of those battles. I mean you have enough honors and now that you have enough honors to like upgrade a squad to like have another unit in it, you know, or to like unlock a new squad and and you maybe you get these new story characters which unlock the ability to hire you know a new type of class and you know it's 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 a really good addictive loop and it's just a really good strategy game like you know people early on were like hey the battles they play themselves but again that's just sort of the animation all the work is done sort of outside of battle right where you know and we talked how this game has like a gambit system right and and and, and the things you do with the, the the gambit system is everything right um and you combine the that gambit system, you know, which is sort of like your priority. Like, uh, oh, well, this class has a certain type of attack that's really good against like armored units or flying units. Well, only do this attack if there is a flying enemy present, right? And it's like, well, actually, you can combine it to where only do this type of attack if there's a flying enemy present and also the lowest hit points of the flying enemy's presence. You know what I mean? Like, you can really oh. tweak these gam this you know this, these tactics this gambit system if you will to where it, it's like you're you're tinkering with like a like a like a machine that that's going to play out in a certain way and and you want it to like do a certain thing and you could do mock battles you could do battles out in the world you see me getting into fights here but this is an actual like battle battle like a where you're moving and capturing towns and getting into like multiple fights and trying to like take a castle these are just sort of little encounters that can happen out in the world um is the, but, but, but it, 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 it's, it's tinkering with those squads and like trying hmm, what if i do this class with this class and 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 you can you can combine like the team composition with the gamma system but also like the really like cool and like potent itemization like the equipment you get in this game can really change the way uh like an entire character or class or like whole you, you know, squad performs and like it's 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 fucking around with those things that have made this game like so addictive. Like I spend so much time just theory crafting and getting out uh, into my squads and like swapping out equipment. And like I kind of want to give an example. I, I'm, I'm looking at this footage, but you might have like a sword that has this effect that you know at the very start of battle triggers this ability um, immediately. It's like a, it's like a it's like a like a battle start ability right but you can equip that weapon on like a really slow character that is really strong but now he's doing an attack at the very start of the battle so his actual slowness doesn't matter or here's a good example there is a there's like certain classes that can attack an entire row right they might not be able to kill them but they can damage like three enemies because they're in a row right um and then you have like a cavalry unit that can like if he kills a unit can go again he gets another turn basically he gets the resource back that lets him act again that and that certain like ability type right so if i just need to make sure that the that the unit that goes that can attack multiple enemies at once goes before the 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 knight which is going to like finish them off and create a chain of like finishing off all the enemies in a in a combat right so it's like hmm but this character that can attack like a whole row at once he's really slow so now i'm throwing items on him to make sure that he goes first right and and maybe like my cleric has an ability that will proc um like a, a an attack buff and i want him to do it on the night because the night's finishing everyone off but the way i do that it might be like setting a tactics menu to where he, she, she's prioritizing using that buff on like 
the unit that has the highest hit points in the back row, which just happens to be my knight. It's like really tinkering and tweaking your squad to like create these really cool chains to do like wild shit, right? Like I can I can go into like uh like initiate a fight like preview where I lose fucking horribly. But if I really think about it and like tinker some things around, like I can make it to where I don't take any damage and I one shot the enemy. How, and like that's how granular how potent... does the gambit system go? I'm curious. It can be very granular. I mean, like like the amount of options you have are insane. Because like like mm-hmm. I, like I I have a like a witch that has the ability to to freeze enemies, which is nice because it means they can't act. And I. And, and uh, like so i also want her to go like really early right which is nice uh but i do that with like itemization but as far as like like the actual like tactics i now want to not finish off the frozen enemy i want to i want my other characters to attack the enemy that's not frozen because i've already effectively like crowd controlled that you know disabled that that frozen enemy so i can go into the tactics and make it to where they only target like d- like enemies that are uh, not debuffed like, like there's so many mm-hmm. options to like absolutely fine-tune the tactics and like, this also insane. allows you to manipulate like the turn order exactly i mean well so you control the turn order with things like that with things like i i i mean itemization is like a big part of like controlling the t- the the turn order obviously like class type right there's some classes that are just faster than others but you can like uh make it to where um you know, you have you you give an item to your fast character that can like give her turn to a slow character um, that that can is now going like much sooner than he normally would. And it's sort of like there's even items that might slow a character down, right? Because you want them to go last. Like for example, the main character, his his like bread and butter attack, um, he's like a tank, but in his attack will heal him he'll life leech right well if he goes first in battle he's going to use his life leech while he has a lot of hit points you don't want that so but there's an item that can make it like really slow him down his initiative to where he's going towards the end of a fight and now his life leech ability is actually healing him when he needs the help it's cool like there's so much to tinker with there's so much theory crafting and the items are good i'm consistently running into items and like weapons and accessories um, armor and stuff that are um, really changing the way I think about my comps and like it, if you're the kind of person who goes hard for that kind of stuff this game has got you which you know I'm glad because you know I, I always worry a little bit that you know maybe you know like the maybe we talked about it last time but like the strategy game in 13 Sentinels is not very deep right there's just not a lot there to like tinker with this and so i was a little worried about this but this is not shallow at all there's a lot to fuck with and i love it and i and i also want to say shout out to like the there's a lot of battles like there's a lot of like combats and stuff and this what you're seeing now is like a real combat but like there's a lot of cool variety and like they're con- they're consistently introducing new ideas new enemy types but new also like map gimmicks and stuff and 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 i'm always i'm like consistently surprised like how much variety there is and like and um you know it's it's catch it's it's this game is fucking rad (laughs) it's really i want to know two questions one do you still think this what are your feelings on the story just and i'm is it like is it gonna do any is the story so interesting enough to do anything for someone like me (laughs) i mean it's as good as is like any other vanillaware game that's not like 13 sentinels right i mean like I like 13 sentinels is, story. is like a visual novel kind of thing and it's story yeah, that's like a mystery, mystery. It, it, it's like a mystery and with all these twists and stuff this is not like that this is like a fire emblem story or whatever right you know and and it, it's like it's like well you know written and well acted like the performances are good but the main story is just like you know you're it's you're a liberation you know you're leading this liberation to take back your kingdom or whatever. Cause you're, you know, the prince and you were, you know, when you were a small child, your kingdom was taken over by the evil, bad dudes who are very evil, baddie dudes. And, um, you know, you're winning battles and you're recruiting new characters who are like, Hey, no, actually I'm not one of the bad dudes. I'll join you. And like, there's cool, like little character moments. And like some of the characters just like look really cool or have like a good, cool personality um and there's like cool little character moments here and there 
but this is nothing like 13 Sentinels. I mean, the story is not going to be the thing that drives you forward. Um, I'm playing on expert and I think that's a good difficulty balance. I don't think, I think most people should probably play on expert. Honestly, I feel like I was if this game, this. you would recommend I play it on expert. Well, so, so here's the thing. I, did, right? I feel like I just insulted myself by when, saying that. When but. this game, when the demo came out, they, they did something stupid. And that's that right before the game came out, they made all of the modes easier. And I think they, they, they weren't, and they, I don't think they have enough time, had enough time to really think about the balance. Like, like when, when the demo came out, they had, um, story like difficulty, they had tactical difficulty and they had expert difficulty. And I played the expert demo and it was actually pretty challenging with the, when they patched the game for release or like right after release to introduce story, a new mode called normal tactical and expert. And they made all of them easier. So even no, there's an extra difficulty. Expert is actually easier than it was in the demo. I don't know why they made all of the difficulties easier, but it's really frustrating because I feel like I'm starting now that I've got a hang of the game and I'm a lot further in, like your shit's getting more and more powerful. And I feel like the enemy's not quite keeping up. I um, mean, I'm just becoming better at it and like more knowledgeable. And I feel like I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to start steamrolling this game. And I don't like that feeling because I want to have to, I, I want to have to feel like I need to be doing some of the, the theory graph thing I'm doing to be successful, not just, well, I can just not think about it and make this team composition steamroll everything. I don't, I don't want to get into that situation. So I'm a little worried about it um, because it's not, there hasn't been weird difficulty spikes for me. Like the hardest stuff I've done is still the earliest stuff I feel like, which is not a good feeling. Remind um, me, is this, is, does this game have permadeath in it? No, it has no permadeath. I, I mean, okay, right. there is a difficulty you can unlock when you beat the game that is slightly closer to resembling permadeath. But even then, I mean, there's ways around it. Um, okay. I wish that difficulty was available from the start. Um, and I don't know, maybe some people will struggle with it, but but it, like in a good way, but I feel like they're not going to do that if they pick normal. You know, like I think, I think if you picked expert, maybe you wouldn't steamroll it like maybe I inevitably will. But that balance might be actually end up being really like good for you. Then you could always turn it down. I just can't turn it up anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you, you seem pretty adamant cool. that this is not something I should even bother with. No, I mean, it's, it's just got, it's some, just got some good vibes and some cool. It's just not your thing. You couldn't even get shit. through three houses. I mean, I mean, like this is this this is just not the one. It's just not the one. I mean, this that is hurt. a very hurt, medium, long game with a big world. I mean, it's just. You're not going to breeze through this thing. I don't well, think. Well, no, it's I lot. didn't think I was going to breeze through it. That's for damn sure. There's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of fighting. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of video game. Okay. <laughs> but it's um, it's really fucking good. It, and if you're a strategy RPG person, you know who you are. If you like a Fire Emblem, if you like a Final Fantasy Tactics, if you like a, any of that shit, like, this one's a gem. This one's awesome. Like, this is an awesome game. And, you know, I've been playing, I've been enjoying Rebirth and I was enjoying Yakuza before that. And I was enjoying, you know, Tekken and shit before that. I'm saying this game has been, this year has been like pretty amazing for me. King's Vein, you know, I started playing early on this year. Um, but Holy like, shit, that was this year. And Bellatro, and Bellatro, absolutely adore Bellatro. But like this game here has me like, is my main uh, squeeze right now. It's, it's awesome. I love it. Um, cool. But it, it's my shit. This is this is like you know, it's literally. How many points do I get if I play this one battle. and beat it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you ten? Have to look. ten points? No. no, not ten points. This no. is not a ten. I think point. it was. I think, I think it was like two points. or three. No, it, um, because it's pretty. You know, I, I feel like if something's pretty, you get less points because you, you're a bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're such an asshole. <laughs> well, I mean, is there is there not like actual like, you know, that's. There's reason there's, in there, right? There's some truth to that. Uh, uh, does doesn't doesn't mean I'm I'm doesn't mean you're any less of an asshole for saying. Yeah, that. Well, I mean, everybody, everybody's a little like that, right? No one wants an ugly ass game. Um, true, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. Um, ugly games suck always. Yeah, look at King's Vein. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think King's Vein's gonna sell a lot of copies. Right. That actually honest. felt gross. Taking a pop shot at King's Vein for no reason. I have no idea. I'm sure that so, game's so great. So I have played a bunch of King's Vein, but I stopped playing it because I'm so I'm in their Discord and I and I follow the development very closely. 
and they update the game constantly including like new classes and stuff and it's definitely the kind of game and i know with horizon's gate as well um oh i'm gonna have to know my footage i think um <laughs> I, it's going to get better you the charge your battery bread. Be, be, because because they they keep they keep introducing like new classes and stuff so i'm taking a little break on that one i'm going to go back to it for sure because that game's awesome so yeah that's it cool 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 let's cool. uh let's roll right into the four player minute it's that time right Let, uh, did i skip over anybody I, I we didn't really have an official like doc this week so i don't know if i missed anything uh okay sounds like we're good okay um four player minute Final thought of the week. You know how this works. Uh, Brad, I'm actually going to let you start this week. I'm not ready. Go with someone well, else. Got, what? That's bullshit. You can't do this to me. You it, called me it, oh, twice now. Okay, oh, not fine, fine. You go first. Uh, I just want to say, speaking of the year of crazy games, crazy Japanese games, I'm excited about. Um, I will say, there's been a lot of conversation about Rise of the Ronin, negative previews, Team Ninjas, Open World, Samurai game. Um, and I think it's not going to score great. But, and I'm a little bummed out that it is not. Is it going to be my days gone of the year? It's, it's, no, not even <laughs> fucking close. Um, this one's, I, th- I think it could be. But, no, Nick, why? Why this one? Just, why this one? I don't Jesus fucking Christ. know. I'm just, I don't think you're going to like Rise of the Room. Maybe you will. I don't know. But, you know, and I have uh, misgivings about, you know, I think Neo, like, 1 and 2 have the maybe the best action combat system of any game ever. Like, it's the best. The best combat. Is I can only games, speak to number one. So, so, so to think, to hate, I hate, and I've, I've said I've hate, I hate to see that they're going in the direction of, like, simplicity, of just trying to, like, knock off Sekiro or Tsushima, which I get it. Those games are successful and people love them, but, you know. Your those games also still exist, and they're going to hold Rise of the Ronin up to those. And this game is a Team Ninja game, and it doesn't have probably a quarter sorry, of, the budget of either of those fucking games. And well, maybe I don't know how expensive Sekiro is, but I'm saying like people, this is gonna they they've streamlined it into something that is now going to be compared to like a thing that is the same, but also like you know probably five times the budget in like something like Tsushima, and which was beautiful even as a PS4 game. And this shit is get, looking like a PS3 game, right? And and I'm like, okay, well, when you were Neo, you had your identity. You had this, like, you. it was a Souls game, but, like, the combat was, like, super deep and complex. And you can really get into, like, really cool weapon styles and stances and, like, actual, like, crazy tech, right? And now you've, you, you've made something that is... You, you've lost the thing that gave you the edge, I feel like, with Rise of the Ronin. And I'm like, well, it's... it's what, Grain of salt, though. Reviews are not out, so we don't officially know any of this yet. Reviews aside, I, but but we, we do know that, like, there's one attack button now. To go yeah. from, like, Neo 2 combat to, like, you have one attack button, yeah. like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, I'm still gonna play this game. You know, I, you know... I like modern team Ninja. I think modern team Ninja has been doing work despite the crazy comment that Chris Davis had in discord the other day. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? I knew you were going to bring that you up. You said, I'm not a fan of modern team Ninja. Like what is not modern team Ninja? You're a fan of dead or alive. You're a fan no, of the I'm bad a, Ninja I'm a fan of games. There was Ninja only Guided one Black. good Ninja. That's it though. That's, That's the it. only one. What else did Ninja guy? What else did team Ninja do after Ninja Gaiden black? That wasn't mid. Or terrible. Like I literally mean, nothing until Neo, right? Crickets. <laughs> fucking crickets. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right? So like what do you mean modern Team Ninja? Modern Team Ninja has in terms of like I mean, Team look, Ninja's legacy, modern Team Ninja has been killing it. I'll reiterate my problem is that I had such a very poor experience with that initial Neo Alpha demo that the, it the just the initial one. <laughs> Dude, it, it fucking, I cannot express to you how much it is. It was like the hardest me. game I've ever played in my life, that first Neo, like, bait alpha. There was also two alphas that came out before that game came out. Yeah. They figured it out. The first, the w- Wolong had a beta as well, where, like, that the was parry hard. was like, people were like, what the fuck? 
I can't parry shit. You made a Sekiro, except the parry is impossible. And I and I played <laughs> and you know the what? demo for Woe Long, and I didn't like that either. I know. So. And they tr- they fixed it by the time the game came out. Like, I'm saying, they took the Well, then why do I keep playing demos where things. I have bad experiences? Maybe you, you should just demos stop playing Teen Ninja alphas. demos. <laughs> why do you keep it. playing Maybe demos? Yeah, stop playing alphas and play a video game. I don't know. Boom. I don't want to tell you. The games ended up being good. So, I mean, I guess I, I don't know if that one's on you or them. I don't know. But I get it may it. also that just be my Alpha personal taste. Was horseshit. Well, I mean, obviously that too, right? But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Rise well, the Ronin is about to hit drop 75 minus maybe. So we'll see. I'm excited. Also, shout out to Ayudin Chronicle. You know, th- there's a beta out for that for backers. I'm not touching it. Um, I'm waiting for the final release, but uh, uh, opinions have been good. So uh, the, impressions have been good. So I'm excited. No, just for people listening at home, Nolan is is nodding and shaking his head yes. and nodding. And <laughs> I'm I'm also av- currently avoiding uh, the backer demo. Echo echoing Brad's thoughts there on Iodine Chronicles. Uh, Nolan, why don't you go next? Sure. Uh, my four player minute starts right now. Um, like I said, I've been having a very love hate relationship with Bellatro. Um, a lot of love and a lot of hate. There, there are times where I get very excited when I'm playing it, and there are times where I get very frustrated and I'm like, why do I even play this game? Uh, but I, I'll continue to play a little bit more. But like I said, I do want to put it down uh, because I do want to get back to Yakuza, mainly because uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 <laughs> is about to come out. Uh, and I am pretty hyped for that. Um, not just uh, fantasy critic wise, uh, but uh, everything I've been hearing about the, you know, the, the I'm surprised nobody heard of the character early. creator. Um, I thought yeah. about it, but I was like, eh. The yeah. uh, the, I, I mean, I, I will I admit that people made, I made a weird character, a weird looking guy. I, I've seen some pretty impressive stuff, uh, but uh, very excited for that. Can't wait to play it. The first one was one of my favorite games uh, that year, and also. We, definitely in in somewhere in my top of all time uh fantastic fantastic nice. game um yeah um but that's really it for me cool uh, uh chris davis sure uh my hyphen excitement is for anything but video games right now because mm. finishing infinite wealth and rebirth back to back Again, 96 hours in Infinite Wealth, 83 hours in Rebirth. I'm drained. I So I took like last week off from video games and it has been so nice. Uh, I've watched all the episodes of Delicious in Dungeon. I've watched the first season of the live action Avatar series. Um, I'm getting caught up on TV shows. Man. Someone watching and Shogun? let me tell you, I'm watching Shogun. How how good is Delicious in Dungeon though? Huh? Really good. Or Dungeon Meshi is we true fans call it. I mean, it. let me let me tell you something. That's a that's a studio trigger show, and that is the most chill trigger show ever made. Like uh, until it's not. <laughs> until it's not. Like when it wants to kick in, it does, but like so good. I mean that's final story, episode that comes out goes Thursday. Places. Yeah. Um, also really good time for movies. Uh, Godzilla minus one got an Oscar. That was awesome. That's true. That happened. New Godzilla movie comes out next Wait, what week. Was the Oscar? Awesome. What was the Oscar? Visual uh, effects. Uh, uh some a real Oscar. Bullshit, that's a real Oscar. Uh, hey, that's a real you Oscar. Man. Suicide Squad got an Oscar. Like, go, go I the, look I up the fucking Matthew Broderick Godzilla got that. Oscar. Go look up the, uh, the recording of that oscar scenario uh, thing from last sunday just watch that it is delightful all those people were what walking up on stage oscar? and they had their own little godzilla figurines and and the, the ladies were wearing godzilla heels yeah it was it was cute it was delightful they were all wearing godzilla heels it was pretty and, cool and we we got a we got a new godzilla movie next week i didn't realize that ghostbusters comes out this friday i'm going to I see on no saturday idea. baby uh, yeah so I'm going to have yeah. to buy my tickets for that. It is a good time for me not to play a video game. I'm yeah. liking this. All right. Crispy, your rebuttal? Uh, well, I would say that I was making excellent progress in Like a Dragon. Um, but I 
I haven't played in the last week or two. Because, oh god. Because Destiny added hoverboards. <laughs> Destiny 2 added hoverboards, like big okay. surfboard size hoverboards instead of sparrows. So you can now fly around on a hoverboard. Like a fucking silver go, surfer? Yes, they go really fast. You can jump with them, you can do tricks, you can grind in midair on them and they're so cool. Uh, but it's tied to like the Guardian the game Guardian Games event that's going on right now. So like in order to keep it after the event finishes, you have to like get like twelve hundred medals or something in like a three week period. So I've been putting all my time into that to get this hoverboard because it's actually like really cool. Uh, a lot of fun. And just uh, you know, it's uh it's nice to have fun with Destiny again, you know? And kind of be excited about the final shape, uh, even though I'm not. One of these days... Uh, like, I'm really days... dreading it. I'm really dreading the next, like, six months to come as far as that yeah, game there, goes. I, there's I would like bad well, there's going around about Budgie right now. Yeah, and I, there's there's a lot of context to that that I think is getting left out of a lot of conversations. And to the point where it's like... There's factions of that community that are, you know... People are talking about, like, Sony's really licking their lips to just, like, go in and take over Bungie, like, like oust the upper management and take over. Yeah. And at this point, a lot of fans, not all of them, but, like, there are there are groups of fans who are uh, into that idea. Because upper management and Bungie has been cited a lot of times as kind of being, like, a problem. Um, yeah with with the sort of like development cycles and development processes the way that studio works right now though is like they don't have a crazy amount of oversight like they're not just like a production studio for sony um but they're bet they're butting heads a lot on like on um sales numbers and on timetables and i you know i don't know i'm i'm remaining optimistic because of the content that's coming out right now it's actually kind of cool. Um, they just did a live stream today showing off this, like, not season, but, like, two-month content update they're going to do right before the big expansion comes out called Into the Light, where they added, like, a new, um, this new thing called Onslaught, which is basically, like, a complicated horde mode. It looks really fun. It looks cool. I want, like, I truly love this game, and I want it to be okay. Like, I just want it to be, like, in a in a place that's like okay and has you know uh, you know maybe it doesn't have to be the most successful game in the world for me but you know just not just not like dog shit and i think i think that like enthusiasm is building up again and people are still really burned by uh lightfall but you know before that we got witch queen which was really good um so I don't know, like it could, it, things could be okay. I want to believe that they're okay. If you have no skin in this game, whatever, like that's fine. You can be snarky about it, like whatever. I that's fine, but I'm I'm choosing. One to of hope. these days, I'm choosing to days, hope. One of these days, crispy is gonna stop being ashamed of his of his game, and he's gonna bring footage. Yeah, look, you can like, actually like see winged, in action. Yeah, no, it's like it's like it's like yeah. Sound I like I want to see hoverboards. Part. Listen, man, like, there's Just bring still, a stuff, there's still you... stuff to love about this game. And, like, I'm not buying the expansion until it comes out. Like, I'm not I'm not pre-ordering it. I'm not buying it until it comes out and people are like, it's good or it's bad. I'm not doing that. But I just want, I just want it to be okay. I yep. do really I love you. Destiny. And I just want it to be okay. And that's, and that's okay. I want, I, want, I want Destiny to be good. For you and for others that, you know, I thought, nobody wants a bad game. Nobody wants, nobody to see wants a, game. a bad game. Nobody nope. wants a bad game. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Um, my final thought for the week, I had two sh real short. So I'm still pressing on with Persona 3. I'm still enjoying that game. Um, I had a weird experience this past week where I spent my entire lunch break running through Tartarus um, on my Steam Deck, right? And I get to a boss, and just through happenstance, I made a bad 
poor decision. I didn't heal or whatever. And uh, the boss fucking one-shotted my main character. Um, and the game ends. Even though I had three live party members with almost full health. Mm, welcome to Shin Megami Tensei. Uh, they ended the fucking game, and usually I was like, whatever, it'll give me an opportunity to start from the beginning of this battle, because it does that every fucking time. Because it's happened to me, if not that exact scenario, but I have died a couple times over the course of the game, and it always just says, would you like to restart from the right before this battle? And I say, sure, and it reloads, and then I go in, and I don't make that same fucking mistake, right? That, mis- that option just gone. The only two options were... Go back to the beginning of Tartarus and don't and lose everything you've done from this entire run, or go back to the main menu, which is basically the same fucking thing. Hmm. So I lost my all the progress I made in that uh, entire like forty five minute run that I had been doing. Um, so that was that. It, let's just say I was having a really hard time concentrating at work after that. I was like just fuming. I was like, "You've got to be shitting me." The dumbest. I was like, "What modern RPG ends a battle, ends the game when one out of four not party a, members dies?" RPG. It is. Wait, what? It's not a modern RPG. No, but okay, sure, whatever. But like, it's a remake. It's a modern remake of a classic RPG where they did change and fix things. Like that should have been. That could have been one of those things. And not to mention, I still don't get it because I, again, like I said, I have died before and it has given me the other option. So when I died, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Oops, I made a mistake. I won't do that again. Uh, And then I was like, wait, what? Why are there only two options now? What the fuck are you talking about? So that was pretty um, upsetting. Um, Also, in coming coming to the realization that, you know, uh, as much as I'm enjoying this, there are certain things about persona i think it has a lot to do with like the characterization like some of the characterizations that kind of annoy me and whatnot and i was just like you know when i finish this like i might yuffie? be I'm, i might be yeah there's a lot of yuffies in this game i feel like to me and i'm, I'm kind of like you know i might finish this and just be kind of like satisfied with my persona experience i might just be like this might be my i don't know i don't i can't i can't guarantee wow. that when persona 6 is announced i'm gonna be like Let's go. Wait, are you fucking serious, Nick? I, I don't believe that. I mean, you I don't. Can... Well, first of all, I haven't seen Persona Six, so I don't really know. I can't say for sure. I'm not going to be excited, but like, if you say that, I feel like you're at well, this I... point. You're only playing this game for the points. I've no. I mean, dude, I'm. I am invested enough in the story. I've played 45 hours of it. Like, I'm. I like the combat. I like. I just. But I'm like, I've also played. 15, 20 hours of Persona 4, 15, 20 hours of Persona 5, and, like, I know the kind of the... I'm just saying, like, the loop of Persona hasn't changed much. I I mean, I hate to make this comparison, but it's it's almost like... Sorry, Nolan. It's almost like Pokemon in that, like, they do the kind of same formula... With each one, this fucking I just, guy. You, I don't you, you know say that, Nick, but you got to understand the original Persona Three was not. A lot of the stuff that's in this game that you're playing is stuff that came later from the sequels, so it might see, feel similar for that. Well, reason. I played four, I played five, and now I'm going back to three. But it's a modern no, I know, but but I'm saying three, three just... was a very like basic. I mean, like it's not basic, but I'm saying the formula. Look, I'm was playing the, same the game. I'm the enjoying the game. I'm playing the game. I'm enjoying the game. All I'm okay, saying is... I'm just is, saying, like, I don't even like the Persona games, but even I'm kind of stoked to see Persona 6. So it's weird I mean, to sure, hear I'm you say excited, that. No, I'm excited to see what Persona 6 is, but I'm I'm just... They're really gonna... Like, like the... Like, the uh, what am I... Like, I don't want to say gimmick, but, like, the conceit of that, the of that game is gonna you need wanna, to be something special. what color it's gonna be? No, I just need, like, the conceit of whatever Persona 6 w- is is gonna the, need to what, be something what special. What color is gonna be? What color? You mean are you talking what about like color? blue, yellow, yeah. red, green makes yeah. the most sense. <laughs> green <laughs> like, you think makes the most sense? Envy? I mean, Maybe? they've hit all the primary Yo, colors at this Monday. point, right? So Mauve. Hmm. Um hmm. Look, I I'm still really enjoying it. I just when I by the time I finish it, I might I, it's going to be Perfect. kind of a hard Persona Six is going to be kind of an uphill battle. Maybe trying to get me on board for it, but we'll see. Um, I don't believe that at all. You'll be. And the other thing, right I just there. wanted. To, I didn't mean to spend this much time talking about Persona. I just wanted to give a shout out because Chris Davis is right. It's a great time for movies. There's a lot of stuff coming out that I'm really, really excited to see. Uh, I'm going to see Ghostbusters on Saturday. Um, I got tickets for Monkey Man. Did you uh, see Dune? I saw Dune too. Thought it was Dead. fantastic. Oh, did um, 
and uh, I'm also really excited to see. I'm excited to see uh, Late Night with the Devil and Immaculate. I really want to see both those. Dude, uh, the hey, Fall Guy. Know, I'm pretty excited for. You know how like you know how um, Robin won't watch trailers because she doesn't want to know anything about the movie going into it, right? She, she's eased up on that a little bit, and it's only okay. certain movies. And and I've always kind of like rolled my eyes at that a little bit, but. Uh, Late Night with the Devil is the first time in a long time where I've watched a trailer for a movie and I've been like, you, why did you do that? Like, yeah. do you know why did stop? you do that? Like, yeah. <laughs> I very why did you put stop. all that in the trailer? If I know a trailer's going in that direction, I'll just shut it off. Yeah, I, I know. I've done the same thing. Um, especially with horror. I want to see that movie. Exactly. And that trailer was kind of like, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> uh, can't wait to see it, though. It does look really, really cool. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of stuff coming out. I'm gonna be going to the uh, the theater a lot in the next couple weeks, and that's pretty You're cool. You watching like... plays? Plays? The yes. theater? Going... Yes. All... I name dropped a bunch theater. of movies so I can the tell theater. you how excited I am to go watch a bunch of plays. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, like a play is always something that I think is gonna be like whatever. Before COVID, like, we had at the end of the play, I'm like, oh, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Every play, every play that's happened to me, really. Yes. Before COVID, Robin and I had Okay, had, well, uh, you're as a tickets. parent, you're about to start seeing some really shitty plays. No. no okay. <laughs> I mean like professional or semi professional yeah. plays. Um, oh, I just man. like no, no, no. plays. I don't know. I'm, I'm before before though. COVID hit, Robin and I had season tickets to um yeah. uh Broadway in Austin or whatever they whatever it's called. So we'd go see a bunch of different stuff uh downtown. Those were always fun. Those were always a lot of fun. Um, oh, and I pulled up the Draft House website, and there's a Monty Python the Holy Grail quote along that's going to be that's at the end of the April. Not, that shouldn't be surprising in an, at all. Um, what do you th- mean? Those Whoa. are the worst, right? Because it's one of those things where, like, you know, we went to the, the mummy parties along. are pretty fun. I don't know. We went and saw you the know. mummy. We went and saw the mummy. Uh, we did that's the, that's the like saying, party. "Hey, you love Undertale, don't you want to play Undertale with a bunch of Undertale fans? That'd be great." Yes. I mean, Brett's such a stick in the mud sometimes. Really? Yeah. It's like that's the word for it. It's like going to a fucking Rocky Horror Picture Show, like Midnight Screen. No, like that's, that's fun. That's, that's fun. fun. That's different. Hey, that's you know different. what? Sometimes, you, sometimes you just gotta do. Uh, so this, this is kind of unrelated, but like I was trying for you know. I was trying to convince Robin to, to watch Scream with me uh, a long time before she'd ever seen any of them. Uh, and I finally convinced her because we were going to, I was like, they're doing a, they're doing Monty Python for, or not my, my master pancake at the, uh, the draft house for Scream. So the first screening, first time she ever saw Scream, which is a very important series near and dear to my heart for me. And I had, I had to go watch it with her uh, at, a, at a master pancake screening, <laughs> which was still cool, but Maybe not the ideal experience watching it as a first viewing. Um, Master Pancake is hey. doing Roadhouse next week. The original. Oh, oh, that. Yeah. Oh. I've never seen it, so I'm, you know what? That You've never seen one. Roadhouse? It's no nope. class. Roadhouse does ah. not need the Master Pancake in a yeah. You could just watch Roadhouse and laugh your ass off. It's my uh, highway or the other but way. But to answer your question from earlier, Brad, I'm watching Shogun. I'm only two episodes into it, but I watched mm-hmm. an episode just before we recorded this, and very good. That is, I want Rise of the Ronin to be good because, I mean, like, I, it's <laughs> if Rise of the Ronin is disappointing, it's super unfortunate because the timing seems perfect. Because I could just watch Shogun and get super happy to play a samurai game, and I'm like, well, this one's disappointing. I don't want that. You should. Uh, oh. All right, let's yeah, end this shit, know. dude. Yeah, let's wrap oh, this you, up. Guys. Do you want to say anything about Alone in the Dark having the most predictable reviews ever? Are you still no, kind of hyped? Me, me? Am I still? I mean, I'm yeah. still probably going to play it maybe at some point, but not right now. Not right now. That's for damn sure. Um. Anyways, I, I liked I liked that some somebody pointed this out and I, and I did think it was actually pretty funny because one of the reviews on it, like Open Critic, like the little blurbs or whatever they had, it was like Alone in the Dark 2024 was a, was is without a doubt the best Alone in the Dark game ever made. And it said seven out of ten. <laughs> Damn, that sounds about right for that series. Um, 
But anyways, guys, that's our show tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh, of course, you can watch us every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 4 podcast. We're also streaming on YouTube. Uh, we're dual streaming on YouTube, so if, you, if you're if you so inclined, you can watch us there on, when we record on Tuesdays as well. You can find all of our episodes, of course, on 4playernetwork.com or your favorite podcast service. And uh, most importantly, if you if you want to jump in and be a part of the ongoing community activity discussion uh join us in discord at discord.gg slash four player uh we would love to have you in the meantime uh guys be good to each other play video games we'll see you next week good night